back. This was against Holmes last week in the semifinal game. Watch Baylor. He was hurt in the middle of the year. That kept his stats down. He bowled 66 yards on this play. In the semifinal game, Bailey gets 244 yards rushing by himself. They run the TCU Veer option. Here's King. Bye-bye, baby. Bye-bye, Holmes. 34-7. Yates can move the football, and defensively, they're just as good. Realize Gates with their 622 points this year, Ray, sets an all-time Class 5A record for offense in a season, 41 and a half points a game against terrific opponents. That is just an unbelievable average, and as we pointed out just briefly earlier, I believe they were tested really only twice this year, both times by uh, Jones, mm -hmm. uh, once in regular season, once in the playoffs. They beat them by six points, but the rest of the time they just steamrolled everybody. Holy cow, did they blow some people out this year. We're talking 70s to nothing, 50s to nothing. Jones, the only team that got within a touchdown of them, and they got within a touchdown twice. Okay, now let's focus in on Odessa Permian and Mojo Magic. Here we go, Norm. This is their leading ball carrier. This is Marcus Lott. This is a plain vanilla offense, but the players who may look plain vanilla when you start, you suddenly realize are a terrific team. Here is Woody Bryant, hurt in the middle of the year with a sternum injury, causing this four games. He's their second leading rusher. If Bryant were well, he probably would have been their leading rusher. They throw the ball about one-third of the time. Here's Harrington to their best receiver. In fact, about the only one that threatens you, Greg Anderson. But what a player he is. 65 catches this year. Defensively, they're a give-but-do-not-break type of team. And do they create mistakes? Here's one last week against Cy Fair. Their best defensive back. Now, Yates will throw the ball a lot today. Yates might want to avoid Robert Williams in the defensive secondary. He's got nine steals. He is a major college player who will probably be on a lot of recruiters lists at the end of this season, right? Okay, we also have sideline uh, reporters working with us today. It'll be Tony Therio who will be working the Yates sideline at Jay Hendricks for Odessa Permian. Let's go down to the sidelines now and check in with our men down there. Okay, down on this end of the uh, this sideline, gentlemen, we do have a game of contrast, like you said. A loosey-goosey kind of ball club. Uh, Yates is wide open. Yates is wide open. They came out here yesterday afternoon to practice, sat on the 50-yard line, talked to Coach Booker for a little bit. Somebody said, uh, Coach, I'm hungry. They went and ate. They didn't practice. I, I think they probably think they're already prepared. Over on the other sideline, though, Permian really prepared. Jay? I tell you what, indeed you say it, Permian is a little more little more tradition, a little more oriented. You know, you can tell they've been in here. The experience shows. They come up for their pregame yesterday. They spend a good hard time out here practicing, running their plays, not only first team offense, but second team offense. You're talking about a team that flew in three planes, uh, seven buses. People came down two days early. They're all prepared. Permian tradition, just a team that uh, wants to come in here and win, and they're going to play hard, and you can guarantee it's going to be a good, hard football game. Back up to you guys. All right, thanks, fellas. We'll be checking in with them periodically throughout the football game. We're still uh, about eight or nine minutes away from kickoff. We'll be having the national anthem coming up in a moment. Before we take the uh, quick break, Norm, any prediction from you on who's going to win this thing? First score is very important. Very important. Yates is a club that when they get ahead of you, they just really get on top of you, and they get if they get their confidence flowing, they tend to blow you out. Permian is very small. I mean, their offensive line right. gives away 40 pounds per man to Yates. But they've given away that kind of weight all year. Permian's a tradition. Dig down, control the ball, don't make any mistakes. If Yates m makes mistakes early and it shakes their confidence a little, that could be the key. I think for Yates, who is expected to win this game because of their ability, it's important they come out and show their ability early. Permian, which wins it on tradition, wants to hang in, hang in, hang in. I can't tell you the number of important games Permian's won in the last five minutes. In the tradition of that school, they win the last five minutes of football games. It is very important for Yates that they come out and show Permian that they have the ability to play with them, and that's just the opposite of what people are saying. It is Yates, I think, that must prove something to themselves, Ray, because they've had trouble in the big game. They've lost three times in the semis, and once in the finals in the last four years, regardless of what they say, that golly, that doesn't bother us, you've got to start wondering about yourself, don't you? 
Well, and last week, even though they beat Holmes 34-7, to they had five personal foul penalties. Now, they got away with it last week, but I do not think that they can have that sort of thing happen against Odessa Permian. Give you a, a feeling for the difference in tradition. In the last 90 games, this is the third time Yates has played out of the city of Houston. <laughs> for Permian, this is the ninth time they've played in Texas Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> they play here as much as the Cowboys do. It's incredible. Well, I guess the other thing, too, is for Permian, they've got a pretty long bus trip to go play anybody once they leave Midland uh, Midland Lee and uh, Odessa High, Midland High, but uh, the rest of the teams there, Conference, and what is known as the Little Southwest Conference, you've got a pretty long trip, so they're used to going out on the road. We need to take a break here. Let's have a word from our local stations, and we'll come back with a kickoff of today's championship game in a minute. <laughs> everybody we're just moments away from kickoff here at texas stadium as odessa permian gets ready to take on houston yates it's a beautiful afternoon temperature about 48 degrees it's probably even warmed up a little more than that and as we said at the beginning norm we've seen a lot worse weather than that here at texas stadium in december especially important is the fact that not only the temperature is reasonable for a day like this there is no moisture you're going to have a perfectly dry field and there is no wind so there will be no disadvantage from the conditions. We should see whatever these two teams have to offer. The conditions will not limit the passing or the running game. They will not favor one team going in either direction. They literally only have to play each other and not the conditions. In uh, amplifying uh, a little bit on the other four playoff games uh, today, there was one last night. We'll be showing you uh, some information about the other playoff games as uh, the season wraps up, Class A right up through 5A. There is one other game underway this afternoon, Norm. Yeah, this afternoon uh, over at uh, TCU Field, starting at 1.30, Sweetwater and Tomball played for Class 4A. Class 3A tonight at Baylor Dangerfield and the Cuero Gobblers. A hey, tough football team. <laughs> Class 2A, the final tonight at UTA's Field. Gee, isn't it nice that UTA's Field has something to put on it now that UTA has no football? Electra and Groveton. And Electra is electric. They can put points on the board. We also hope uh, that many of you got an opportunity to see the uh, special. Uh, around the state. I know some of the TV stations uh, carried it on the state band championships that were held recently at uh, Memorial Stadium in Austin. Norm, I had an opportunity to be involved in that project and what an exciting thing. There were over 30,000 people in the rain at Austin Memorial Stadium to see the state high school band championships as champions were crowned in all five classifications. Let me ask you only one thing about that event. Have you ever seen more color any place in your life. <laughs> no, definitely not. I'm telling you, Leroy <laughs> Neiman would go nuts watching the band competition. <laughs> <laughs> this is a team at Odessa Permian that is outrageous in their almost arrogance of winning football, and I mean that very positively. Their high school fight song is the Hawaii 5 0 theme. You have to go 5 and 0 to win the state title in the playoffs. <laughs> these, these people just build their whole life around this club winning the state championship. It's outrageous. They've won three. They've tied for another. They are the defending champions. They tied Beaumont French last year. They lost another handful of state titles, four others. This team is always there. Gates has been always there in the 80s. We've got two spectacular coaches and the team coming on the field right now has a marvelous offensive football team the Yates team averages over 400 yards a game they average over 41 points a game they are a very balanced offense they run an option the TCU option if you've seen the TCU option you've seen the Houston Yates option offense their quarterback is extremely large for a high school quarterback price is over 200 pounds they've got all maybe six running backs that'll play college football the starters are bailey johnny bailey who gained 1500 yards as a sophomore was hurt as a junior hurt some this year as a senior but he's piled up over a thousand yards lawrence king the other running back excellent player wide receiver quentin smith has caught almost a thousand yards of passes this year this team will do everything well balanced offense and defense very large to stop them permian 
very small defensively. That's right. But extraordinarily disciplined. When Coach John Wilkins' defense says player A, be it spot B, they're there. As you can see, the Yates Lions are designated the home team today, wearing their red jerseys, gold trousers, white helmets. And Norm, uh, in, in uh, keeping with what you were saying about the Permian tradition, the Permian people were a little bit upset, or some of them were, because they can't wear their black home jerseys today. They love to wear black. Uh, they got to wear the road uh, outfits this afternoon. But that just goes to show you how strong uh, the tradition is there. It's all tradition. It is not talent. Believe me, it is not talent. Please, those of you who are on the Odessa Permian side of the ball today, don't take this as an offense, okay? <laughs> They'll say, what do you mean we don't have talent? Odessa Permian gets more out of some than anybody in this state. You're going to see a high school football team in the championships today with an offensive line that averages 178 pounds. This is a team, and I say this again in all positiveness, this is a team of cockroaches. Odessa Permian, just like the cockroach. A, they're always around. B, they're small. They're feisty. You look at them, and they always look like there's more than 11 of them on the field. It's not so much what they do to you, it's what they foul up like a cockroach. And just like a cockroach, you can drive them out of your kitchen. But then they set up in your bedroom. You drive them out of your bedroom, they set up in your dining room. They will get here and play 48 minutes of football, and you aren't going to get rid of them. The uh, Permian football team, too, in spite of the fact that they have the great tradition, Permian is not an old school. The school opened its doors in 1959. They won their first state championship 20 years ago in 1965. In fact, they recently had a 20-year reunion for that first championship team. So they're not an old school. But if you look at the last 25 years, they have been, uh, more than any other team in Texas, the, the dominant squad in the highest classification. You talk about an outrageous statistic. This school has been open now 27 years. In the first six years of their existence, Odessa Permian lost 26 games. In the last 21 years of football at Odessa Permian, they have lost 26 games. Three games in the 80s. You will identify the young man in the wheelchair. Please. Yes, Kevin Wilson is the young man in the wheelchair, an Odessa Permian captain. He was uh, seriously injured in an automobile accident after a playoff game against El Paso about uh, three or four weeks ago. He just got out of the hospital. The uh, players have, since his injury, uh, they put little tape, 75 was his number, little 75s on the back of their helmet and he is certainly an inspiration for them today. The injury occurred when he was hit, the car he was riding in, he was hit from behind by a drunk driver, dislocated hip, crushed pelvis, major surgery, out of the hospital to be here, yet another one of the inspirational and motivational factors for Odessa. Okay, let's go down to the field for the national anthem. Houston Yates against Odessa Permian for the 5A state championship. Yates 15 and 0, Permian 14 and 1. The coach for Yates, Luther Booker, in his 15th year, has won 13 district championships.
as the rest of the Permian Panthers come out of the tunnel for today's game. John Wilkins, the head coach at Odessa Permian, and he likewise has a phenomenal one-loss record. Booker, 137-31-6 in 15 years there. John Wilkins came to Permian the same year, but didn't become the head coach until two years later, 73. He is 148-15-6. Two of the best high school football coaches in the country. Yates this year has 15 wins and no losses, as you said, Ray. 11 of the 15 wins by 26 or more points. Uh, this club hardly even gets tested, it seems. Okay, in the three deep for the Houston Yates squad, Richard Wilhite will be on the right side up there at the uh, upper left-hand corner of your screen. Down on the near side will be number 21, Gary Williams, but the man in the middle that they uh, really want to handle the football is number 20, Johnny Bailey. 242 yards rushing last week in the 34-7 win over San Antonio Holmes. And folks, remember, if you uh, if, if you uh, generally are accustomed to watching the pro game and the college game and you don't get out and support a local high school football team, there are a few differences in the rules. But the major thing is high school football consists of 12-minute quarters. So when Norm says, well, Yates scored 72 against somebody, they did that in a 48-minute football game. So so the time can really get away from you in a hurry. Now, kicking off, by the way, for Permian when they uh, get ready to uh, get it underway will be number 65, Steve Hill. Now realize there will be nothing here today like first downs or penetrations deciding the game. It is points and points only. If it finishes in a tie, the state declares two That's right. reigning 5A champions, which is what we had last year. Beaumont, French, and Odessa Permian. Okay, Hill approaches the ball at the 40-yard line. It's a swift kick, and it will be taken by one of the up-end number 33, Lawrence King. And he has swarmed under at the 17 yard line. Good coverage by the Permian Panthers on the swift kick by Hill. The Houston Yates offense will be first on the field, and do they have some people? All right, Charlie Price, number 12, the very talented quarterback. Johnny Bailey, the breakaway threat at running back with Lawrence King can pop him too. Quentin Smith and Robert Lampkins are deep threats, and Ceno Alexander a good target at tight end. Bailey and King each average more than seven yards a carry in their backfield. Fear offense for the Yates Lions on first down. And the give is to Lawrence King, number 33, 917 yards rushing this year. A three-year starter. The offensive line for Yates. The best one in there is the smallest one. Randall Moon, the center. Uh, Moore, the right tackle, is very large. 265 pounds. The rest of them in the 200 to 215 range. Second down, seven yards to go for the Yates Lions at the 21-yard line, near the 21. And the give is to King again, and he gets some running room up to about the 29-yard line. Lawrence King picks up a first down for Yates. Blake Bat, the rover back, made the tackle for the Permian Panthers. The Permian defense, it's just tiny people, basically. Except now, for Troy Baker, he's got it. He's not tiny, 235 pounds in a major, major college player and Sir Vance, the middle linebacker, he'll call his name maybe 20, 25 times today. He's a good one. And there's your secondary, Robert Williams, number 81, the big interceptor, and he should have a good game today if Permian is going to win this thing. And Price is knocked down at the 31-yard line. Louis Salcedo has been hurting this year with a bad back, was questionable as a starter today, but has started, and he makes the stop. He Let's go down to the sidelines quickly, Norm, to uh, Jay on the Permian side. I want to tell you, I think you've seen something that's evident of Permian. They come off at the start on defense and start hitting you hard. Now, they're going to continue to do that, and you saw that. They're big on third down on stopping drives, and I think you're going to see that. Watch for Troy Baker. Watch for Savannah. Now, Troy Baker's a talker. He likes to talk the offensive line. There may be some extra hitting going on. Who knows? Back to you guys. Maybe what Jay's saying is the potential for some of those personal foul calls, like Yates experienced last week when they got five. Second down, nine yards to go for Yates, and here is a flag. They've taken a little too much time here, I believe. 
delay of game is a call against Yates. And again, uh, Norm, we don't want to belabor the fact, but uh, Yates has had these miscues and problems in the past, but been able to overcome them with sheer talent. In games where the final score is going to be 34 to 7, mistakes aren't going to play a factor. You're going to win the football game. However, in a game against Odessa Permian, which figures to be close, penalties, fumbles, bad snaps, things like that are going to be a factor. And here we see Yates put into a, a second and long situation. They bring the tight end, Zeno Alexander, way out to the near side. Clinton Smith in the flanker position at the top of the screen. Robert Lampkin splashed back to throw. He's a good one. Over throws, and it is almost intercepted. It completed the 46-yard line. Billy Jones, number 12, covering defensively for Permian, but the pass was overthrown, Norm. Price has an excellent arm. He is large for an option quarterback. Usually they option quarterbacks, they're supposed to be little people. Price has a big arm, and he airmailed this ball at least 10 yards long. In fact, could have pretty easily been intercepted had the Permian player recognized the flight of the ball before he came off the receiver. Let's see what Price does on third down. 13 yards to go, ball at the 26, just underway here at Texas Stadium. The third down play, and the rush is on, and there's great coverage in the secondary. Price lobs it upfield, incomplete. He was nearly sacked down at the 12-yard line, but with uh, excellent athletic ability, managed to get the pass away. Troy Baker, the big defensive end of Brady, too, was the man applying the pressure. Major positive possession for Odessa Permian. Yates has come out and jumped on people this year, and as you can see, Yates may be bigger, but Permian is definitely quicker in the line. Give a start of price there. He avoided about a 14-yard loss by getting rid of that ball. James Christian to punt, and it's not a very good one. It's very high, and Anderson will let the ball bounce. It takes a Houston Yates roll, and will go out of bounds at the 34-yard line, where the Odessa Permian Panthers will get it offensively for the first time this afternoon. When you're going to see the Odessa offense, you're going to say to yourself, my Lord in heaven, how do they run the football? Their quarterback, Harrington, whom you see talking to John Wilkins, does not scramble. He doesn't have 100 yards rushing this year. They do not have speed on the backs. I mean, Bryant, Lott, and Seiden, you're going to see a good players. Anderson is the only wide receiver who averages a catch a game, and yet they get 33 points a game from their wing team. And Jason Harrington, the quarterback, will look for Anderson a lot. Way back to the left side, two tight ends. First down carry, not much there, to the 36-yard line, and that is about all. Melvin Foster, the big middle linebacker for Houston Yates, making the uh, stop on the first down carry by Marcus Slot, leading rusher for Odessa Permian, 1,171 yards of the season. The offensive line for Permian looks like a team of football managers. These people average 178 pounds. Don't judge them on that. They can play football. Second down, nine yards to go at the 36-yard line of Permian. Lauterbach is put out at the bottom of your screen. Now he goes in motion. And Anderson at the top. Give this to the fullback. And it's Sider. He's up at the 40-42-yard line. And as Lauren pointed out, they're not big up front, but they are very quick and strong, and they'll blow you off the line of scrimmage. Maurice Hobson, the left defensive tackle, 225 junior made the tackle. As you watch the uh, defensive line here, a 4-3 alignment for it. Yates. They play it pretty well straight. You see Hudson? He's the only junior that starts on this team. They start 21 seniors in the offense and defense, and that one junior, this is a very good football team full of very talented major college prospects. Big third down and four play at the 42-yard line for Perrier. Harrington looking to throw. He is in trouble. He's sacked at the 35-yard line. Never got a chance to set up. Larry Gill from his left end position came blowing through there to sack Harrington. Greg Garrett, the right tackle, was also applying some pressure. Now you see why Odessa Permian fields it must control the ball by running it and with short passes. Because in these situations where the defense creates fields, they will get a pass. They can just blow and go and overpower the smaller Odessa lineman. Steve Hill, number 65, will do the punting. Johnny Bailey is back deep for the Yates Lions, along with Gary Williams. Not much pressure, a low kick, and it will take a Permian bounce. Down to the 30 and inside the 20, and they're getting a break here. It is going to roll dead at the 13-yard line, so Yates will put the ball into play. 7.24 to go here in the first quarter. No score, and we will be right back. Danger 
toughest spot for Yates. They tend to handle the ball a little loosey-goosey in the option. A mistake here is something they must avoid. First down play is Johnny Bailey, and Bailey bounces off a would-be tackler up to the 20-yard line. What an exciting little player. Johnny Bailey, 1,500 yards rushing last year, hurt part of this season. As we told you, he had the big game last week against San Antonio Holmes. Here's another look. This is the TCU option. Wide splits by Yates trying to spread out the small Odessa defense. Quite frankly, if they can get Bailey one-on-one -on -one with almost anybody, they feel it's a big play chance for them. He picked up almost eight yards. Second down carry. Bailey again. This time, not much there. He will not have a first down. He penetrates the 20-yard line. As you get a look from behind the Odessa Permian bench, I would say that in the battle of the fans this afternoon, Permian is the winner. They're on the home side, the, uh, or on the visitor's side, and that's where the broadcast booth is located. But as we look down below, the near side where we are is just about full in the lower deck. Third down, one yard to go for Houston Yates. He got the first down. It's Lawrence King, the other member of that running back tandem. Tackle made by Danny Servants, a middle linebacker, 184 pound senior defensive star for the Panthers. If we could stay on the Odessa Permian defensive unit for a minute, you see 62 right in the middle of your screen. Jerry LeClaire. Would you believe a 161 <laughs> pound right. defensive lineman? We're not lying. First down, Yates. Here's the option play. Pitch back to Johnny Bailey. And Bailey gets outside. Bounds at the 37 yard line. I believe he's got a first down. Blake Bat, the rover back, came over on the left side to bump him out. Paul, but is Johnny Bailey excited? This was a dangerous play. Bailey barely caught the pitch from Price on the play. You'll see the pitch is high. Watch the play Bailey makes to catch it. That could have been bouncing at his own 20. Then he gets around. Now, who hits who here? I get a feeling Bailey dished out more damage than the tackler did. Tell you what, uh, Jesse Spruill, the left tackle, ran a long ways to get over there and make contact, too. The option again this time, it is Lawrence King, and King is racked up at the 40. It's maybe to the 41-yard line. Jerry LeClaire and Darren Allman, the safety man. Allman, a 166-pound junior, up to make the stop, pick up a three. It looks now like Yates is starting to move the football. Yes. Again. Permian bases their defense on doing this. They will give a little, but they'll make you run a lot of plays. They pride themselves on not giving up the huge play, and that's what Yates has lived on this year. From the 41-yard line, Price looking to throw. Gets the pass away. It is all incomplete. It could have been intercepted down at the 45-yard line. Almost picked off by the uh, Permian Panthers. Jesse Spruill was all over the quarterback twice. Let's go down quickly to Jay Hendricks on the sidelines. I want to tell you, you've seen uh, Yates run the pitch a couple of times now. Permian has had success in defensive in the pitch. Most teams have turned the ball over. That may be a big key. So far, they've done well, as does Yates, but if they could turn the ball over, Permian is well on picking up the ball and, and putting it toward their, uh, their half. So we'll wait and see. Back to you guys. Let me point out, Ray, They've stopped the pitch in West Texas. They've never seen running backs like this. That's true. <laughs> it was Blake Bat who almost had the interception a while ago. Nickel defense in the game now for Permian, anticipating the throw on third down. And the Yates Lions will not pick up the first and ten. Tackle made at the 43-yard line by a bunch of swarming white shirts. It looks like uh, leading the way, Jerry LeClaire, Billy Jones from the left corner spot, and Patrick Wilson also in there, Lord. Okay, notice... The, the defense for Permian, they feel like get so many people to the ball that if they simply prevent you from hitting them big, that sooner or later, they'll make a play like this and stop your drive. That's what's that's what's kept him in football now for 25 years at Permian. J.A. Hunt, very high. Anderson, fair catch at the 17-yard line. Four minutes, 34 seconds remaining in the first quarter. No score. Houston Yates and Odessa Permian playing for the state 5A championship. The Odessa offense that comes on the field is a wing tee. Hey, nobody runs the wing tee anymore. Nobody drives an Ensel anymore. <laughs> but, but John Wilkins makes it work. It's a very plain offense, but it runs on execution, not on splash and dash. One thing, they don't feel they can run this team from Yates consistently. So they will try to do some strange things. Play action, things like that on first down. 
Okay, let's pause for a moment here at Texas Stadium in Irving. No score. Odessa Permian and Houston Yates will be right back after these. Which yardage picked up, so they're facing a third down and four at the 24-yard line there into the field. Important that Permian start establishing the fact they can move the ball a little bit on the Yates defense. By the way, Yates offense gets a lot of notice. Yates defense committed only 77 points in 15 games. Quarterback Jason Harrington, third down, four yards to go. Takes the snap, and they will try to go back inside. Nice move by number 36, Marcus Lott, the leading rusher for the Panthers out of the fullback position. Good cutback, and he has enough for the first and 10 at the 30-yard line. Good block by Scott Russell, the tight guard. Now watch these little linemen zip around and get in Yates' way. Great blocking. Look at the execution on the blockers. One, two, three. You've seen four terrific blocks already. Lock not hit until he made seven yards. First and ten, Panthers. 2.57 to go, first period. See what we mean about quick quarters in high school football? Panthers' second possession in time already running out in the first period. They'll run it up the right side. This guy, Mark Sider, and he's got some room up to the 40-yard line just shy of the 40, and now Permian's offensive line opening up some holes for the backs. Again, when you watch this team, you say to yourself, my lord, how can't they figure out how to stop these little people? But nobody has this year. They don't get outside much. They have no power players. They have no speed players. They have one terribly gifted wide receiver, but they have not lost in 31 straight games. Second down, short yardage. Wonder if they might gamble here and look for Anderson. He's the big play threat. Or will they just try to be conservative and get the first down? Well, they don't get either one. They stay conservative and do not pick up the first down. So the short carry here, and that's nothing. Let's go down to the sidelines quickly now to Tony Theriot. Okay, no, I'm over here, I'm right down here on the Houston uh, Yates sideline. The coaches, the offensive coaches are really upset right now, balling out their players on the, on the, on the sideline here. They're going to make some adjustments, trying to encourage them. think they can probably do better. They think they've got something here, but they haven't been able to execute. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Tony. Tony knows what that's all about. He did some coaching uh, at the high school level. He's been there. <laughs> also played football, too. And now we've got a flag. And that's an understatement. I think every official on the field threw a, threw a yellow hanky. Offside against Yates. No, no, they're going to... Yes? Yes. They're gonna, oh, no, no, that's not a legal procedure. Yates, that's offside. The guy jumped off the touch. But anyway... It was you know, Maurice Hobson, the left tackle number 79, I believe. Let's, let's see if we can pick it up here. He comes straight across, jumps and hits the center. Now, you know what did that? Odessa Permian went to a long count. They've been going quick count, quick count, quick count, quick count. You go to a third and one where you know the defense is anxious and you say, hut, 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 hut. You go to what a nine count and the defense says, I can't stand it any longer. And jumps. Permian with good field position at the 45 yard line. Harrington, play action, think he's going to look for Anderson. And he is tackled at the 43 yard line. Anderson was going deep downfield, but again, Norm, Great pressure applied by the Yates defense, led by Kenneth Payne, the weak side linebacker. He wanted Anderson down the left side. Give some credit to Reginald Briggs, uh, senior right cornerback, and the safeties Eaglin and Moore. By the way, Eaglin, number one, has tremendous range, a major college prospect. They had Anderson doubled up, and Harrington had no place to go with the ball. Lauterbach splits at the top of the slot. Now he's in motion. And they're rolling right, and a lot of heat is on. Bryant makes a catch, 40, 45. That's all he can get. Pick up of about two yards as they fake to the top side of the field and then came back down with a quick toss to Bryant. Only gets a couple of yards out of it. Chris Gardner, linebacker, made the tackle. Harrington, that was a screen. Now, on a screen, you're supposed to let the defenders come in. <laughs> not that fast. <laughs> not, not enough time to let, let that develop, really. Got an injured player for Odessa Permian, and it's number 77, Greg DeMarco, Greg DeMarco the uh, tight tackle, 194-pound senior. And that's their big offensive line. That's right. He is the uh, he's the biggest one across the front for Permian. The center, Roy Wooden, at 171. The guards weigh 185 and 183. The strong tackle, the strong tackle, Indriat, weighs 173. 
The University of Texas at Austin grants rights on behalf of the UIL for today's telecast that any rebroadcast, retelecast, or retransmission, other use of the accounts and descriptions of today's game without the prior consent of the University of Texas at Austin and the University Interscholastic League is prohibited. I believe it's number 71, Randy Rhodes, who will replace DeMarco. And that is going to be the end of the first quarter of play here at Texas Stadium in Irving. And most of the cheers right now are coming from the Permian fans. Something of a, well, a moral victory at this point, Norm. Yates has not scored. It's Permian's kind of football game. And we'll be back with a second quarter of action right after this pause. Yates can pin back their ears and fly at Jason Harrington. Sider and Bryant, the setbacks. That's Lauterbach coming in motion. Harrington back to rushes on. He sacked at the 36-yard line. That's the third time in the football game they've gotten to him. James Good, who blew through there to make the sack on the quarterback. Now let's go down to Jay Hendricks for an injury report. Jay? Let me update you. Talking with Trapper Tim O'Connell, he's a trainer at Permian. He says it's a sprained knee. They are going to try and fix him up and get him back in the ball game. Right now, we don't know how soon or how, what the extent of the injury is. They do have ice on his knee, and as soon as we can know whether he's going to be back in, we'll check, but they are going to try to get him back in, Greg DeMarco. Steve Hill will punt. Gary Williams and Johnny Bailey are back deep. Not much of a rush. This is a good punt by Hill. Great hang time. Bailey fumbles the football and now goes out of bounds. He picked it up on the bounce and goes out of play around the 28-yard line. There's a nervous moment. <laughs> you, you think Yates is nervous. You should be trying to defend him. <laughs> Bailey just scared the bejeebers out of people. Now realize, Bailey missed the portion, the middle portion of the season with an ankle injury. Bailey has already rushed for 1,064 yards and returned kicks for over 500. As you can see by the statistics, little difference in these two teams in the first quarter. Very little offense so far. Just underway, second quarter, no score in the football game. Johnny Bailey, he's a game breaker, 40, 50. They got the angle on him, and Servants finally runs him out of bounds near the 39-yard line of the Panthers. And Bailey finally cracks one. Robert Williams, the right corner, came across the field, got the angle along with Servants. What Yates does here is they go against their flow. See, Bailey comes back against what looked like a leftward flow. What happens is Permian is so quick, they attack direction as much as they do attack the ball. So here comes Bailey. Look at the size and speed combination of Bailey, who almost jukes out of those last tackles. First down, Yates at the 39, option play. Rice picking, pitching back to Lawrence Gay. King is in big trouble, and he is down at the 30, let's see, at the 42-yard line. That'll be a loss of about three. Quarterback, uh, Billy Jones, the first man there, number 12, to make the tackle for the Panthers. Billy Jones, another one of those uh, lightweights, 148 pounds, but he will hit you. With as much as he's got, yeah. That's the kind of guy that a guy like Bailey gets hit by, and Bailey says, I felt something. Who was that? <laughs> but, Joe, you have to admire both sides, the athleticism on Gates and the fanatical desire on Permian. Let's see what kind of pass rush they can come up with. Permian. Price looking. Oh, he's got a man wide open. It's Bailey, 35. Bailey, 30. What a move. Bubbles the football. And now Bailey gets on it at the 28-yard line. The second time here in the last couple minutes of Bailey has bobbled the ball, but he's come up with it both times. What they did here was they swung the split right wide receiver downfield and over, taking the safety with it. The man who was supposed to come over in the secondary for Permian is a little late getting over, and Bailey's all alone when he catches the ball. Now, he's going for a touch here, but the juke move, that's the only person he had to beat for Odessa. Number 27, Darren Allman. If he could have beaten Allman, it's seven. Blake Bath, the player who stripped the ball away from him. It's Bailey again. It's the Bailey show on this series. Stopped at the 26-yard line. Gain of a couple on the play. 9.48 to go in the second quarter. Jesse Spool and Troy Baker made the tackle. There's a good look at Danny Servant. Talk about football names. I know you're into all that kind of stuff. Trivia and all of that Bailey Wick, Norman. Danny Servant. Servant. Isn't that a good linebacker's good, name? Good tough player, a too. Tough Tough player. Somebody's going to get a fine player when they get him on scholarship next year. Second down, seven yards to go. Price sets his offense. He gets the ball to Bailey, and that Permian defense has toughened up and Whoops. closed the holes. And now there are two penalty flags thrown. 
We'll have to see if this could be a hold or a face mask at the 25-yard line. It's going to be piling on against Kirby, and I believe they got Blake Batty coming in from the outside. Watch. There, yep, there it yeah, is. There it is. Boy, that's tough. That is a tough break for Permian. Right at the end of the play, you'll see the runner go down and the number 21 enter your picture. Here he comes. Yeah, right there. He was there. He is right on top. Okay, so it's a big walk off of 15 yards. That will give Yates a first down at the 13 yard line of Permian. And easily their best opportunity to score thus far. Down here, they love to run the option wide side with Price. Short Price giving the ball to Lawrence King. He stopped at the 13-yard line. Now let's go to the other sidelines, the Yates side, for a quick update from Tony. Hey, Ray, listen, uh, watch number 83, Quentin Smith. He's got his man, he's telling his coaches he's got his man beat. He's running a little out route under, uh, letting the wide receiver go under him, he's going around deep. So watch him down here on this wide sideline. He keeps turning around and saying, I'm open, I'm open. They're going to throw to him. Well, they put him in a slot up at the top of the screen this time. The tight end, Zeno Alexander, up to the far left. And in fact, they are looking for him. And there's the throw off his hand, incomplete. Nice work, Tony. And you were right on top of that. They did come back and go to it. Smith was open. Price did not lay that ball out there. He zinged it out here. Smith is wide open, but there's not much touch on this ball. It's thrown very hard by Price. Yeah. And he laid the ball up a little bit softly. Smith could have caught it and turned into the end zone because there, as you saw, no white shirt to pick. Third down, 10 yards to go. Third down conversions, one for three, both sides. 8.31 to go, second quarter. Price. Quick toss. It was incomplete at the goal line. It had touchdown written all over it. Robert Lampkins turned in, had his man Billy Jones beaten, but it's an incomplete pass. The kicker for Houston Yates, as you see Lampkins drop a sure touch, is Quentin Smith, the wide receiver. He has 98 points kicking this year and another 72 points on 12 touchdowns. Luther Booker told me he feels Smith's dependable range is 30 yards. And this is going to be a 30-yarder. This is just under 30 yards. You can see they're spotting it down at the 19-yard line. Quentin Smith trying to put Yates ahead. The kick is wobbling off to the left side. He hooked it left. It is no good with 8.23 to go in the second quarter. Still no score. And we will be back right after this great call. sideline reporters Jay Hendricks and Tony Dario. Delighted to have you with us on this holiday afternoon. Anderson, the lone wide receiver, splits out of the near side. First down play for Permian. It's Bryant, number 18, a young man who missed several games with a sternum injury. Gets it up to the 22-yard line. Larry Gill makes the tackle. Let's go down to Jay Hendricks now for another update. Jay? Let's talk about Woody Bryant. He's the place kicker for Permian. Now, last week, he had trouble. He missed three field goals. Cypress Fairbanks missed three field goals. Now you see one just missed. Field goal kickers are having the troubles out here, and I don't know why, but they just can't seem to kick the uprights. Maybe one of them will split it here pretty quick, and we'll uh, get the scores uh, to change and put some points on there. Back to you guys. Okay, thanks, Jay. Second down to eight at the 22-yard line. Harrington, draw play, gives the ball to Sider, 25, and he battles his way to a first down across the 30-yard line. Mark Sider, 191-pound senior, 536 yards rushing on the season. Melvin Foster made the tackle, Norman. They get over 1,700 yards from a couple of workhorse fullbacks, Lock and Sider. This club alternates their fullbacks. That's how they get their plays in. As you can see, side are out, lot in. That's how John Wilkins, who coordinates his own offense, gets his plays in. They get more yards out of two just workmanlike fullbacks than probably anybody else in the state. Lauterbach splits right and Anderson down at the bottom. And there's nothing there this time. It is Marcus Lott, tackled by uh, James Goode. 
225-pound senior, 6'4", at least 10 blue-chip players, college prospects, major college prospects, on the Yates football squad. Yates, has, by the way, Yates has turned out people like Dexter Manley, now That's right. Christian, Elvis Toast Patterson, the starting cornerback for the Giants, Reggie Phillips, the uh, SMU defensive back, that is now with the Chicago Bears, and they've got another bunch of them on this club. Second down, long yardage. At the 27, Harrington, draw play again. And Sider, good determined effort, but he didn't get much out of it. And now the Permian fans are wanting a penalty, no flags. Chris Gardner, the linebacker, with the tackle for Houston Yates. They didn't especially like the fact that the official blew the whistle early on Sider when he wasn't down. He got about another three yards twisting and falling forward to the 33 but the official marked it at the 30, it changes what would have been a third and seven or a third and ten. Not much difference in your play call in those two situations. They've managed to get to Harrington three times already. He rolls right, and this time he's got the time, throws it upfield, and it is almost intercepted at the 45-yard line. He threw it into very heavy traffic. Greg Eaglin, the safety man for the Yanks Lions, almost had the pickoff. If Odessa Permian is going to throw the football, they're going to have to throw it some to keep the Yates defense honest. A big, fast Yates defense who can stuff the run. They're going to have to throw it when nobody thinks they're going to throw it. When they have to throw it in a passing situation, they're at a big di disadvantage because that is the point where Yates' athleticism comes into play even more. Steve Hill, the punt at the 17-yard line. Not a big kick this time, not at all. Let's see if it will take a Permian bounce. And they need a roll here, and they don't get much of one. Ball is dead at the 41-yard line with 5.49 to go in the second quarter. Best field position to start a drive in this entire game so far. Until this possession, which starts at about the Yates 41-yard line, nobody had started to drive outside their own 34. Luther Booker. In year number 15 is the head coach at Gates. He told me yesterday, what we're surprised by so far is nobody's really challenged us except Jesse Jones High School. On the first down play, another good inside move by Johnny Bailey to the 47-yard line. He takes nothing and turns it into something. Mark Gladson, the strong side linebacker, put the hit on it. I venture to say, Luther feels challenged right now. Odessa's given you, I wonder the last time Yates played this year. We're midway in the second quarter. I wonder the last time they reached midway in the second quarter without a point. I think, uh, what, the, the one or two games where they were challenged by Jones, there was one of those games where they scored only 13 points, and that was their lowest point production of the season. This time it's King out on the right side. Jesse Spruill over there for the Permian Panthers to make the tackle, 211-pound senior. It's going to bring up third down and one. The ball just inside Permian's into the field. Eight passes against Holmes for 214 yards, 26.7 yards of completion. And so far, all we've really seen is a lot of the dump ball variety passes. And neither team having any luck with third down conversions. Johnny Bailey, first down to the 40-yard line of Permian. And he is... Uh, Far and away, the leading rusher in the ball game for, for both sides. Blake Bat, the rover, made the tackle. The, the uh, linebacker for Odessa Permian comes flying through that Salcedo. They just let him come on a trap, and they run outside of it. They but gave Bailey. Bailey reminds me of those USC tailbacks. I'm sure USC will ask about it. They always ask about everybody else to get around the football. I'm sure they've... They've seen film on him. Lawrence King takes it back to the inside down to about the 37-yard line. The defensive end, Troy Baker, came up with a stop. Been in on a lot of defensive tackles uh, so far here in the first half of play. It, it just amazes me every time I see 62 LeClaire playing at 161 pounds amongst all these tall trees. All right, could Yates take it in and take the lead? 3.50 to go in the quarter. Wide open. Smith, 25-20, out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Quinton Smith made the catch. The right corner, Robert Williams. Made the stop on uh, Smith, but there he comes back to the huddle. Number 83, remember he was open earlier for what well, would have been a sure touchdown. And this tackle here, something Permian seldom does, really is going to come back to haunt him. 
the, the defensive back, Almond had the line on Smith at about the 27. That's a big 15 extra yards that Smith got. Good shoestring tackle, or Bailey might have gone. There was nobody back there. No might have. He was gone. If they don't get Bailey at the line of scrimmage, there wasn't anybody else home. They were bringing the linebackers and doubling the wides. There was no safety back there to make the tackle. It was Patrick Wilson, number 35, who saved the touchdown with that anchor tackle at the 12-yard line. Second down, nine yards to go. Yates threatening for the second time in the game. They missed a 29-yard field goal earlier in this quarter. Price back to throw. For Smith, off his hand, a bit overthrown in the end zone. It really does surprise me that Yates hasn't done more of the option play in this game. They worked it once early going right, which would be the direction they'd run it here to the wide side, and it worked for over 10 yards with Bailey. This is a good spot for the option. You can string Permian out at this point, but then again, when you look back at the passes they've thrown down here, the receivers were open. Have been open. Third down, nine yards to go at the 12-yard line of Odessa Permian. Still no score in the game, late second quarter. Price, looking right, sends out four receivers, too long, incomplete in the end zone. Again, Yates will probably have to settle for a field goal attempt. Well, Price, as you pointed out, Norm, is getting the receivers open, but he's just not finding the mark. Here comes a couple of people for Yates, but I don't know. Yeah, they brought the shoe on for yeah. Smith. That's the key. There's Smith uh, kneeling right now and getting ready for the field goal try. Let's see, this one about the same distance as before. Uh, he does not have much of an angle to work with. And Yates will take a time out here. They want to talk things over before this field goal try. It's one of the problems of your split end being your kicker. you got to get his shoe on, and by the time he changes shoes, you got to take a timeout. Okay, let's pause for a moment here. Touch that they can threaten their defense. They haven't done it so far. And in fact, hardly anybody around the state has done it this year. Can you imagine playing 15 5A schools and allowing 5.1 points per game? That's outrageous. That's, uh, that's so far and away an outrageous statistic that you call and you ask, listen, is this a typo? <laughs> Actually, Permian's defense isn't far behind that. They're averaging, what, they're giving up 5.9 per game. Two, well, you can see, you come in with two offenses averaging Permian around 33, uh, Yates around 41, and what you wind up is a 3 nothing game 18 minutes into it. <laughs> it you know, the defenses on these two teams are pretty good. They sure are. All right, here's the kickoff. it up here on first down. If they're going to open it up, the one player to open up their offense is the wide receiver, Greg Anderson. He caught 65 balls this year. He caught 70 last year. Another bit of warning here. Talked to John Wilkins yesterday. He has a trick play. A wide receiver around with Anderson, and Anderson can throw the football. He started out as a quarterback. Ooh, see a little change in lineup already. Double wide receiver right for Permian. That's Lauterbach at the top of the screen in the slot. Defensively a little bit to look out for the pass. Permian picks up some yardage, but there is a flag down back near the line of scrimmage, and the Panthers are already backing up, and here's the indication holding against Odessa Permian. Ooh, tough penalty here to take. Now, you've got some decisions to make philosophically if you're Permian. It's first down, you're back in your own territory, first and long, there's only 2.50 to go on the clock. Permian would probably just as soon get this half over with and be down 3 nothing from this spot on the field. They're going to get the ball to start the second half. Don't expect Permian, which lives on being smart, not on being big and tough. Don't expect them to do anything stupid here. It would really surprise me if Permian didn't simply run the ball three times here, grind this clock down under a minute and say, hey, take it back, let's get this half over with. First down, 20 yards to go, and they 
Duthi put on the ground, Sider on the draw, draw play, and he loses another couple of yards. Maurice Hobson, the 225-pound left tackle with a big hit. And that's exactly what Permian is doing, Norm, 217, 216. Yates still has two timeouts left. Permian has not used one in the first half. Imagine, imagine the status of Maurice Hobson when he comes back next year to Yates. He's the only returning starter. 21 other guys. The other 10 guys you see on defense and all 11 offensive players, all graduate. If he's not named a team captain, I think he'll be upset. <laughs> Second down and long. Again, it's on the ground. Bryant wrapped up just as he gets the handoff near the 14-yard line. Chris Gardner and Greg Garrett with some sure-handed tackling on Bryant at the 14, and Permian is going backwards, and now Yates is going to take a timeout, and that's a smart move on the Houston School's part with a minute 39 to go in the second quarter. Uh, they want to get the ball back. This is senior defensive tackle Garrett gets hit and then bumped by two other people, sheds everything, and gets right in on the ball carrier. You know, Garrett's an example of a kid who may not get a major college offer, but he'll go someplace and play. Just about everybody you see on the field from Yates today will play somewhere next year. That's unlike Odessa. Please, nothing against these people, but there aren't a lot of people breaking down the doors of 161-pound defensive linemen. As opposed to Yates, there are some marvelous athletes here, but you're seeing the two types of football teams that Texas produces. Inner city, struggle financially, great athletes against suburban, money, well-coached, tremendous discipline, wonderful facilities. And it, funny isn't it how often, Ray, the final game matches teams like this. Well, I must admit, Norm, I've never heard Odessa described as suburban, but uh, <laughs> Dallas-Fort Worth is getting bigger all the time, though, so maybe... <laughs> <laughs> the outside of it. Or they're going toward El Paso. Third down and 24 yards to go. And the ball is in the air. Incomplete at the 20 yard line. It was tipped and very nearly picked off by the Yates Lions. Number 63, Kenneth Payne, almost got the deflection. Oh, mistake here. Mistake here by Yates. I mean a major mistake by Yates. You're going to see Lauterbach make a great play here for Permian. Watch him come in after this play. And off the clock ever with the timeout for the rest of the session. Hill at the three yard line. He needs a good kick. Is now angling left and it takes a Yates bounce and Permian downs the ball at the 38 yard line. The ball was punched back in the other end of the field, but it was touched by an Odessa Permian player at the 38 yard line. Here, one more thing that worked slightly against Yates there. That ball, once it's just tapped, can be picked up still by the receiving team and run. The fact that it was not picked up and it was allowed to roll dead, look at the amount of time went off the clock. 15 seconds for the punt. So 1.17 to go second quarter, but nevertheless, Yates has great field position at the 38-yard line of Odessa Permian. They have moved the ball extremely well on their last two possessions, missing a 29-yard field goal the first time down there and connecting on a 29-yarder the second time. 3-0 score. Price, near side, caught by Lawrence King. He's down to the 27-yard line. And as you pointed out, right, the stoppage of the clock to move the chains gives Yates a chance right. to organize their offense. Now look at Price taking advantage of the stoppage. He's hollering out his signals. Everybody knows the play. And now the clock will move again. 107 to go in the quarter. Price, lots of time. Goes to the end zone. Does he go out to the great catch? Touchdown by the Rangy tight end for the Houston Yates Lions. That'll be a 27 yard touchdown toss. And Price had all time in the world to get the pass away. Robert Williams was trying to cover back there. In fact, they had double coverage. They had the nickel defense in there, Anderson and Williams, but Zeno Alexander, the rangy tight end who is basically uh, interchangeable with wide receiver and tight end, was split out that time, and he comes up with a catch. The extra point by Smith. Ooh, and it's not a very good kick, and it wobbles off to the right side. No good. 
So, with a minute, one second to go in the first half, it's nine to nothing, Houston Yates. This young man, Zeno Alexander for Houston Yates, is a six foot two, 212 pound tight end, and look at the look at athletic that. ability of Alexander. That ball was not, nothing against Charles Price, but not exactly perfectly thrown. Alexander had to come back and catch a ball that was back over his outside shoulder while he's backpedaling with two people on him. Yates, in the last six minutes of the first half, has not only taken control of the game, they had that fairly much all along. They now have control of the scoreboard. If there's an area that Zeno Alexander needs to work on and show some improvement on, we were told, it's his blocking. Well, but when you catch the ball like that, they, <laughs> what difference does it make? Nobody ever rushes up after the game, yeah. throws her arm around you and kisses you and says, great blocking, honey. Uh -uh. <laughs> now, now that catch, somebody will rush up to Zeno after the game and say, nice catch, Zeno. <laughs> hey, if you have... In, in baseball, right? How much did you work on your field as much as your hit? Nah, you worked work on either one very well. Work on hit. Fact, in no. football, if you're a tight end, you work on catch. <laughs> <laughs> the kickoff by Smith. And the ball will be down at the 12 yard line. Amerson's knee was on the turf when he picked the ball up. It will be marked at the 14 yard line, but you see the official right on top of the play. The referee picked it up, and there is Anderson, who's having a tough time so far in the game. Let's look. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. Boy. No, 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 no. See, no. Well, he, he didn't, didn't have control possession. the ball. That's right. See? He did not have possession of the football. You can go down to the ground and stop the football. The rule is if you are in possession of the ball with a knee on the ground. So Anderson had a right to say he could get up there. By the way, Alexander this year 29 catches, five of them for touchdowns, 390 yards. Pretty usable tight end for a guy who doesn't supposed to get the ball much. That's right. All right, Harrington, first down. This time he's got some blocking, and he finds Anderson. And Anderson is to the 30 yard line. That's a pickup of 16 yards. Let's go down quickly to Jay Hendricks on the Permian sideline. Jay? Something you might put in your brain and think about now. In the playoffs, Permian has not been behind at any time at the half. Here it is, nine to nothing now. Permian hasn't seen this. They do come back the second half, though, and usually be explosive, but they have not been behind at all. And looks like they're going to try and put something down, maybe put some points on and not be behind, or at least get somewhat close before they go into the half. Back to you guys. Well, a good point here about Permian. They had not scored many points in the first quarter this year. They scored most of their points in the second and third quarters. So they are a good third-quarter football team. Anderson, great catch at the 49-yard line, and there's a flag down as Anderson is tackled by Greg Eaglin, the safety. But Anderson, as we told you at the start of the football game, is the receiver that Harrington and invariably looks for in the tight situations. We've got a penalty here against Yates. Now this works for Odessa Permian because they get to talk over. They get to talk over the situation here. Here's the wide receiver. Anderson, everybody in the world is attracted to Anderson. He starts out with a back on him. No, no, we're going to get some safety help in here. Here's the safety help. There's a linebacker in front and he still catches the ball. That was what amounted to a zone with three men around Anderson, and Harrington did a great job of getting it to him. First down, 50 yard line, 21 seconds to go in the quarter. Perrion still has three timeouts, they haven't used any of them. They try a flick flicker here. Anderson wobbly pass, and it's incomplete down at the 25 yard line with 11 seconds remaining in the first half. Now let's go down to Jay Hendricks again, Jay. team that a lot of people see. They're now moving the ball. The defense is going to, or the offensive line is giving them some time to throw, and you'll see Greg Anderson making some catches. Then they try the flea flicker. They'll work it once or twice. Just wait. Greg Anderson's going to show you some stuff. All right? Okay, Norm, uh, with only 11 seconds left, though, they've got the three timeouts, but that doesn't help them. I don't know why they didn't call a timeout there. You're right. They saved themselves about six or seven seconds. That was a double forward half pass, by the way, against Kirby. Yeah. The ball was thrown first, Harrington Anderson. That, that's what the penalty is. Yates, of course, will take it. And so that will rub it out. Well, Anderson at first couldn't find the couldn't find the receiver, had a notion to run. And as you have alertly pointed out, he crossed the uh, the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you what, tell you why he had the notion to run. The hot 
breadth of about three eighths guys on him. He said, I believe I'm going to move around here a little bit. <laughs> Melvin Foster was after me. I'd throw the ball too. <laughs> Anywhere. First down, 15 to go. 11 seconds remaining in the half. Harrington in trouble. Harrington will try to get out of bounds. He may not have made it. No. I believe his knee touched down before he went out of play. Two seconds, one second. The clock shows no time remaining in the first half. And that will do it. So he did not get out of play. So the first half draws to a close here at Texas City. But Irving, the Houston Yates line. The second drive to score the touchdown. They're running around on the sidelines. They're a lot looser. They're smiling now. I think when they get, now that they're up, I think they come out in the second half, we can see maybe some more wide open play. Now Odessa has been giving them some problems on the offensive line. Okay, so we can look for that in the second half. Jay? I think the one thing, Tony, you got to look at, the Permian offensive line is finally starting to do its job. Give Harrington some time where he can find either Anderson or find whoever he has to throw to, maybe uh, a few others out there. That's something they're going to have to do. Now, they usually come back in third half and are fired up. They're going to have to do that. The crowd has not been behind them at all. That's something that they've had the past couple of weeks, and I think that's going to be a big key. This crowd will get up once the band leaves the field. They'll play 5-0. They'll get charged up. And I think you're going to see a different second half. Permian is going to have to do that, or they could be going home without that crowd. Back to you guys. Okay, thanks a lot, Jay. Nine to nothing. Yates over Permian. Let's go down to the field and enjoy. The league is not just an athletic organization. We're proud of the athletics, the girls and the boys, but we're just about to be proud of the academic progress of the students as well. Obviously, there's been a big switch toward the, the academic part of it as well uh, uh, with the no pass, no play. And really, it seems like it's over statewide that uh, everyone has come out pretty much. Uh... The first one culminated in a missed field goal. Then they got a field goal and... As Tony told psychological ice for Yates. As you can see, the total offense in the game, about 181 yards for Yates, and only 57 for Permian. Three to one right now in yards for Yates. Permian really doesn't have that many when you think about it, because those two passes right at the end of the first half got them 36 of those yards. So in the first 23 minutes of the first half, Permian only had a little over 20 yards in offense in the game. Permian absolutely must come out and drive the football. Whether they get points or not is another thing, but they must give themselves the feeling they can move the ball. Okay, now let's talk about the other ball games. Gold weight over Rungi, 24 to 7, and that ball game was played uh, last night at Georgetown for the Class A title. I think it should be gold weight, but anyway, the folks, <laughs> they, they won the title, they don't care what you call them now. Electra and Groveton tonight for the Class 2A, that's at UTA Field in 3A. In the state of Texas today, Dangerfield and the Gobblers. I'd love to see that football game. Uh, Quero, we talked about him earlier, I believe Arthur Whittington, who was a star at SMU and went on to play uh, professionally, was from Quero. They have a good football tradition, and we all know what Dangerfield's got. This is their third consecutive year uh, in the uh, championship game. And in the foray, it has just started in Fort Worth at Eamon Carter Stadium. Sweetwater and Tomball are scoreless at this point in the first quarter. And we will try to get an update for you a little bit later in our telecast. Two other football games going on today, you'll want a note on the Giants lead Pittsburgh 28-10 to in the third quarter. If the Giants win, they host the NFC Wild Card game next week. And in the Cherry Bowl, Maryland is plastering Syracuse at the half. The Lone Star weights around 1980. Free weights, lifting weights. You know how they got them? Luther Booker in 1971, the head coach Gates, talked the athletic department into letting them have a Coca-Cola machine. Just a machine to sell Cokes down in the athletic area. For 10 years, he saved the pennies in profit from each Coca-Cola sales and bought his team a set of weights. This club has no practice field. Their practice field this year was taken away because they had to put the temporary buildings to simply teach the kids on the football field. He has three programs, freshman, junior varsity, and varsity, with almost 200 kids on them. They practice on the same field every afternoon, all 200 kids, all three teams. And when I say field, I mean field. <laughs> Maybe some others ought to follow suit. They're doing something right. Okay, here's today's officials. Uh, Marvin Cantor is the referee. By the way, they are out of the uh, Austin chapter. 
the umpire, Dennis Bauer late, the head linesman, James Wilson, the line judge, Charles Agins, and the back judge, Mike Wetzel. You bought your clothes from James Wilson, didn't you? <laughs> Just wondering. <laughs> you know, quickly, we should say something about the mojo tradition. Uh, we've gotten a glimpse of the mojo banners two or three times in the first half. There are many stories about the origin of mojo. There's a good shot. Now I've gotten at least seven or eight stories about the origin of mojo. At least four or five I can't repeat. <laughs> and the others wouldn't make a whole lot of sense anyway. But somewhere back there, about 20 years ago, somebody came up with this and basically the interpretation is it has something to do with mystical power. Well, if you look at their record, they've got something. It may, it may not be mystical power, but they've got something. <laughs> well, they'll have to draw on it here in the second half, trailing nine to nothing. It is We're very ready important. To go. Very important. Odessa takes this opening kickoff and moves it. Flipping that point over, if Yates can kick off, stop Odessa, and get the ball back, momentum continues in their favor. It was running their way to end the half. Anderson takes the ball at the two-yard line, back to the 10, up to the 15, 20, and Anderson is tripped up at the 25, or he might have gotten a lot more out of the kickoff return. Last week, uh, against Cypher, Permian came out to start the second half, and they put together a beautiful drive to get back in that football game. And as we said earlier, they scored a lot of points in the third quarter this year. And the uh, telling story, I think, is, is going to be here in the next seven or eight minutes. The telling player may be Anderson. He got loose for a couple of catches at the end of the first half. Don't be surprised if immediately Permian throws the ball trying to find Anderson again. Jason Harrington, the quarterback, as they shift the tight end to the near side. And they will run it. Right. Right. pursuing linemen and linebackers, number 66, Marvin Foster, the 220-pound senior who uh, brushed off the block by Scott Russell, and they bring down Bryant for no game. Here is Melvin Foster, 220 pounds, an all-stater, tremendous range and speed, runs a 4.740, started as a sophomore against Converse Judson in that wonderful playoff game, rated by the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, one of the 10 best players in the state. Second down, 10 yards to go. Harrington, play action fake. He's looking for water back. Now, sees Anderson over the middle. The pass is intercepted, then dropped. Now, I believe that Gates will get possession of the ball. Yes, he had it loaded up, then it fell out of his hands, and Foster came up with it. And it will be Yates football at the 45-yard line. As Harrington threw into heavy traffic, there were nothing but red shirts there, and the Lions have got a great opportunity here. Odessa going to the sprint out to try to relieve the pressure a little bit. Sprinting Harrington toward the sideline to buy a little time. Good, good cup blocking, and Harrington, who is the receiver, Anderson was banged around a little bit. Foster intercepted it, turned to run up field, and dropped it here on the line. And the throw is incomplete, intended for Lawrence King coming out of the backfield over the middle as the Yates Lions are going for the kill here early in the third quarter. Your Yates offensive lineup, Price, Bailey, Kane, Smith, Lampkins, and the touchdown scorer, Zeno Anderson in the offensive line. They've got a moon in the middle. Good tackles and good, quick, pretty big guards for high school, both over 200. Second down, 10 yards to go. Bailey and King, the setbacks. He gives to Bailey. He's to the 41-yard line. King's about four on the play. Patrick Wilson making the tackle for the Permian defense. Here is a look at the defense for Permian. Ray Brown starting in place of Louis Salcedo, who has a back problem in the line for Permian. The linebacker Cervantes is the best good quick people on the outside and defensive secondary heightened by the presence of Robert Williams. Some pressure on the Permian defense. Third down. Price rings it out. Nice diving catch by Alexander for a first down at the 29-yard line. Oh, my. That's the tight end, but it's the tight end split out here. They had the tight end away from the line. Now, again, remember the adjustment on the touchdown pass? Watch the adjustment here. A ball thrown behind him, and Alexander makes another acrobatic play. He's done that before, hasn't he? <laughs> but a lot of those on the playground. 10-16 to go, third quarter. Here comes Bailey, 20, Bailey with a 15. And the Yates Lions are picking up big chunks of yardage. Darren Hall with the safety man. Robert 
Michael Williams saving a touchdown there with a stop on Bailey, but it's another first down. What haven't we seen from Yates today? Turnover. I can't think of anything, mistakes. Yeah, except mistakes. No 15-yard penalties. No fumbles lost. No interceptions. No bad snaps. The closest thing uh, to mistakes would have been the uh, incomplete passes there in the first half. But they corrected that too. Here comes Bailey, and he will score. He stopped by steps his way into the end zone for the touchdown. It's a 14-yard run by Johnny Bailey. In zero, and we will take a break. And we will return with more of the 1985 5A Championships in Texas Stadium after these words. The yardage. He is now over 100 yards for the day. 11 carries, 106 yards. One, two, three missed tackles, four missed tackles. That's not a Permian type of, of tackling situation. Again, good runners will cause good tacklers to miss. So a dime 54 to go in the third period. Permian really has its back to the wall now. And Smith kicks off. Wide drive, and it is fumbled by Lauterbach. He picks it up at the six. And he comes to the near side, out of bounds at the 16-yard line. So as has been the case all afternoon, Permian has just no field position at all to work with. Reginald Brinks made the tackle over there on Lauterbach, who will stay in the game at the wingback position. What usually gives you field position is the other team's mistakes. Yates has not made any mistakes. They have not punted badly, fumbled the ball, turned it over. They've done a marvelous job of sealing Permian back in their territory. Permian has not started. 21 touchdown passes on the air, but he's not had any luck throwing the ball this afternoon, nor has Permian had much uh, success running either. Larry Gill making the tackle on the first down carry by Marcus Lott. 1171 yards rushing coming into the game today, but the Permian offense has been stymied. You're going to see Melvin Foster shed two blockers, bang the runner. Foster has a phrase, Ace Say, A-C-E-S-A-Y. Y'all are after every time. Ace Say. Second down, seven yards to go at the 19. Six-yard line, Grant Eagle up from his safety position to make the stop. You may be starting to say to yourself, gee, why doesn't Permian start throwing the ball? Well, to throw the ball, you have to establish the ability or the threat to run. When Yates started to run the ball... Outside their 30 today, it's tough to go 70 yards against Yates. Jason Harrington... 21 touchdown passes on the air, but he's not had any luck throwing the ball this afternoon, nor has Permian had much uh, success running either. Larry Gill making the tackle on the first down carry by Marcus Lott. 1171 yards rushing coming into the game today, but the Permian offense has been stymied. You're going to see Melvin Foster shed two blockers, bang the runner. Foster has a phrase, ace say, ace safety position to make the stop. You may be starting to say to yourself, gee, why doesn't Permian start throwing the ball? Well, to throw the ball, you have to establish the ability or the threat to run. When Yates started to run the ball well, is after they started throwing the ball well, you have to get something working before something else starts working. Now, Permian's nudged it out of there a little bit. Two running plays inside. They now go off a play action to throw the ball to Anderson. Well, Anderson has been the big play threat for Permian all season. Made some clutch catches last week in the win over Cypher. And as you saw, Anderson number 11 splits to the left side this time. And Anderson is going to go across the middle. They're looking for him. He's out there. He's got it. Anderson trying to cut back and elude the defender. He's down at the 49 yard line. And it's a big game for the certainly need it. Well, honestly, we didn't have their phones tapped. That's exactly what they did. They play action after
after the two runs, Anderson splits the two people at the line of scrimmage. Notice the linebacker Foster deep in coverage. Anderson cuts down inside the other safety and gets necktied right here. Holy cow! Forget getting him any 15-34s for Christmas. It's now a 13-34 shirt. 8.23 to go in the third period. Harrington sets his offense. Anderson split their side. And it's a high lob toss. Sam Anderson catches it, but he is out of play. So it'll be incomplete. You have just called the play-by-play -play of the first snap today of Permian snapping the ball in Yates territory. You're right. And how long has it been since uh, Permian was shut out of the other team's half of the field in the first 24 minutes? Much less no points, not even across midfield. Yeah, nothing. No, no shots. Is Anderson a good player? He is a super little player. But somebody's going to steal him. Okay, Anderson out to the near side. That's Lauder back in the slot. Harrington going to the air again, starting to limber up his arm. Underthrown intended for Anderson, and it is trapped at the 38-yard line by Big Melvin. We should tell you that Harrington did not start the year as the quarterback on this club. The starting quarterback was a youngster named Rich Fletcher. That's right. On the Permian Club, Fletcher got hurt early in the year. Harrington stepped in, another senior like Fletcher, and moved in and kept the job. I'll tell you something about uh, Harrington. You know, when, when you look at touchdown passes thrown by quarterbacks, the, the offsetting thing you have to look at is how many interceptions have they thrown, the INT category. Well, Harrington's got 21 touchdown passes. He's only thrown four interceptions. He fumbles the football, and I believe Yates may have come up with it down at the 43 yard line. The ball is stripped away. here at Texas Stadium in Irving as the 5A championship game continues and the Yates Lions are on top 16 to nothing. People back to their huddle. You could see the emotion in the Yates huddle. They were clapping, they were happy, they were up there getting the feel of this game. This club has been denied so many times. In the last four years, this club has at various times been rated the best in the state just about every one of those four years and has never won it. And, and that monkey gets off the back slowly, but it's getting off. It sure is. Price gets it off. Here comes Bailey again. 30, Bailey 20. Great cutback. He's called down at the 12-yard line. Bailey is just piling it up now. Jerry LeClaire, the 161-pound right defensive end, made the tackle off Bailey, or it would have been another six points for Johnny. of Bailey. Uh, cut left. Cut right. Now he's thinking touchdown. Cut left. Put a little in play guy. Cut left. Move and look at way downfield. That's that's LeClaire. LeClaire, the defensive tackle, 30 yards downfield, taking the play. Yates is trying to put it away with seven minutes to go. We're still in the third quarter, but they are already up 16-0. For this moment for so long. Don't expect that they'll go into a shell and say, well, let's just run a clock down. They don't know how to do that. No, no, they don't know how to do it. But this club will continue to pour it on, not with any intent to run up a score, but this club will continue to move the football, and they really have it rolling momentum-wise now. Well, they have never won the state championship. They have been close many times, but it's beginning to look like they're going to take it this afternoon. Another Chief Permian's had a lot of tackles broken this afternoon. That'll happen because of the psychology of the game, not necessarily the physiology of the game. Permian 
a team not used to getting beaten up is being beaten up pretty severely right now, both on the score or scoreboard and psychologically by a Yates team that's rolling. I'll tell you who Bailey reminds me of, Anthony Davis. You know, when you talk about the Southern Cal tailbacks, Anthony Davis was about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, uh, squat, but very fast, extremely quick, and had the great moves. And, well, we've seen what Bailey's got. Okay, let's go down to the sidelines quickly to Jay Hendricks. Jay? I, I can tell you this much for sure. Murray is just not used to being down like this. They've been stunned. They've been hit hard. We've got a couple of injuries. I do know for sure that Greg DeMarco will not come back in the ballgame today. Of course, Luis Salcedo is playing sore. This team is just banged up when they're not used to this happening, and I think they're down. And who knows what the outcome will be. Maybe they can snap back up as far as Permian fans are concerned. Back to you guys. Okay, that is a good point. Permian's had a lot of injury problems this year, but they've been able to overcome them up until this game as Lauterbach returns out to the 27-yard line, and it's uh, Byron Moore, along with James Goo, to make the tackle for the Yates Lions. But that trend of Permian never starting outside their 30-yard line continues. Notice the scoring drives for oh, Yates. Oh, my, it's not taking them any time at all. No, one of them took one 14, one of them took one 12. This club gets it rolling and just goes. Now the problem for Permian is Yates is going to ignore the run, and they'll just yeah. come flying at Jason Harrington. Well, Harrington is a 55% passer, 1,311 yards on the season, but he hasn't faced a pass rush like he's been up against today. Screen pass out on the far side to Lauterbach. Yates had it well diagnosed, and Lauterbach gets back nearly to the line of scrimmage, but we may have a face mask here, as you saw the penalty flags throw. I don't know if they're going to call face or grabbing the helmet and using it to bring them down, the edge of the helmet, but it's definitely against the defensive team of Yates for some kind of penalty, either face mask, or illegal roughness. Let's see what Mark it is. Face mask. It is face. Indicated by the referee. Let's see if we can pick it up, Norm. The left hand. Right there. Yes. Oh my. Oh boy. Fortunate that wasn't more than a five yarder because he tugged the helmet. <laughs> Certainly appreciate the fine job being done by our crew this afternoon. Bringing you the football game. Got to put in a good word for my friend and spotter, Les Palmer, with Money Financial Services. Les has got money? <laughs> well, let me put it this way. He brought the sack lunch for both of us today. <laughs> I don't know what... That really tells you, but uh, he's got more than I've got. Harrington keeps it on the ground. Sider is hit, fumbles the ball, and Permian will retain possession at the 37 yard line. Permian's just, just not had. The last man getting up here is Foster. Now there's a reason he's the last man up. He leaps. The guard surrounds the carrier, knocks oh. the ball out. <laughs> Did you see the move by Foster? He never got touched. The guard tried to cut him, and Foster said, Hey, baby, I've seen that move before. Foster's one of those kind of players, if he was down there in Class A someplace, he'd be fullback probably on offense. Harrington to the 40. Harrington has the first down at the 41-yard line. 5.38 to go in the third quarter as the tackle is made by Maurice Hobson, number 79. Harrington goes back to the huddle. If you listen to the scouts, Foster can be anything he wants to be. <laughs> I'm sure he can. But Harrington, again, is not a scrambler. He's a young man that doesn't have a lot of foot speed. He is a very good, sound, accurate passer. Generally in non-passing situations, but a good job of scrambling out there. First down, 41-yard line. Permian has not mounted an offensive threat today. Harrington back to throw. He's got a lot of time here. He finds Anderson, and Anderson may have another first down in the 48-yard line. If he does, looks like they'll give him forward progress to the 47, and it will be another Panther first and 10. James Christian made the tackle on Anderson, the 39. Little guy weighs in at about 160, but he is catch quick. Watch the move here. Double teamed again. Anderson slides out. Now he's just looking for an open space to help Harrington out. Watch the good move of the receiver angling back toward the football. And then the twist move, trying to get the extra yard. Anderson is listed on the roster at 160, Norm, but I don't believe he weighs it. I think he's smaller than that. Harrington rolling. He'll keep. He's a blocker. He's got some people out there. No, he can't get outside. Still picks up about five yards. Stopped to the 42-yard line. 4.39 to go in the third quarter. 
to the eighth, leading by a score of 23 to nothing. Of course, remember, in high school football, it's a little early for us to talk about this, I know, but you do have the two-point conversion option available to you in a high school game. And 23 points for the underdog is still three scores and three two-pointers. That's, that's the way to think of it. And that's exactly, that's the only way these several thousand fans on the Permian side can look at it at this point. They've got a long way to go, though, to be in a position to win the football game, and time is against them, and so is that Houston Yates football team. Second down, six to go at the 43. Harrington gives to Sider. Sider looking for a block. Pretty hard over there by Sider. He's got another first down. This is Permian's deepest penetration there at the 35 of Yates. And now I wonder, as uh, Greg England made the tackle on Sider, Norm, is, uh, is Yates softening up a little bit? Are they relaxing? Well, they might be celebrating a little early. 23 is fairly safe, quite frankly, and it still looks fairly safe. But if you're Permian, well, you can't get 23 on this drive. You've got to get six, then you got to get two, then you got to hold, then you got to get six, then you got to get two. Now, anybody else in the world you think, oh, baloney. Permian never starts thinking it's going to lose. And even though they're down 23 nothing, they still have another quarter football to go. Harrington is not able to get away. They had him back to 43. He managed to stumble forward to the 40 before Larry Gill made the tackle. Also there. 51, Chris Gardner, and Melvin Foster, number 66, who is always there. You're going to see Good get down on the bottom of the pile here. He was blocked down and then got to his knee and just lurched over and got into the path of Harrington. Yates is an active, sound football team playing now with some confidence. About time for Harrington to look for Anderson again. Back to throw, four-man rush, and they are blowing in there on him this time. He sacked for a big loss back at the 47-yard line. James Good, Kenneth Payne there to make the tackle. And when you look at the roster for Houston Yates and you look at the linemen and linebackers, you see nothing but players who weigh 200 and more. They're just coming in Harrington. See, they really don't care if they get burned once here because they maybe get burned once, but they'll make five plays doing this. Now, Permian almost can't burn them. The yardage is so long that Yates can come flying at him again. Don't be surprised if Yates just comes right back with the blitz again. Well, if there were any trick plays in the bag of Coach John Wilkins and Permian, it would be a good time to use it. They'll just stay with something basic here. And again, Harrington can't get the time to set up and look for Anderson. He's dropped at the 48-yard line, and the Panthers, after moving it down to the 35, went backwards, and it'll be fourth down at the 48. Chris Gardner, Melvin Foster, the big play man again, as Foster will go to the sidelines. The Yates defense nicknamed itself the Crush Grooves. The Crush Grooves. The Crush Grooves, coordinated by Ronald Miller. And the Crush Grooves have been in a groove today. Killed the punt at the 40. High kick. Fair catch called for. Bailey takes it at the 22-yard line. Very short kick by the Panthers with a minute 22 to go in the third quarter and Yates dominating 23 to nothing. You're starting to get to miracle land for Odessa. That's about it at this point. They really needed to go down and score on that possession because we're down to the final minute 22 of the third quarter and as you said, even under the best of circumstances, they'd have to score three touchdowns and get the two-point conversions to pull this thing out. Gates would have to help. And that's right at this point. They're going to have to make some mistakes if Odessa's going to have a chance. Which they have not done today. Our first down is Lawrence King. Good compliment to Johnny Bailey in the backfield. Bailey is the, the game breaker, but King can hurt you too. King, with this game, will be around 850 yards now in the season. He has nine touchdowns. Bailey has 12 for the year. And they don't, those aren't the only two. There are kids like Gary Williams, Crawford, Fisher, who haven't played for Yates today, who are dynamite running backs. It's just that Bailey and King are, you know, a tenth of a point better. Price hands off to Bailey. Good work by the Permian defense this time. Now there's a late flag thrown. And the Blues are coming from the Permian side. So they're anticipating a the penalty going against the young men in the white shirts. Oh my, 
that's another personal foul. You know, that's the second personal foul against Permian today in the scene center for the telecast today. We mentioned the fact that last week it was Yates who got five personal fouls in the victory over San Antonio Holmes. But Norm, this afternoon, it's the, the mistakes and the penalties are going the other way. Odessa was going to have to play a mistake-free game and feast on Yates' mistakes. It has been just the other way around. Yates hasn't needed much help, basically, but they've gotten some. First and 10, 43-yard line, 34 seconds to go in the period. Option play. Hayley. He turns the corner. Gets about eight. They had him cut off at the uh, pass, so to speak. It was uh, Robert Williams, the quarterback, who came up quickly, but again, excellent athletic, sheer athletic uh, ability by Bailey, gets him almost eight yards. You mentioned Davis as the person Bailey reminds you of. He reminds really me, does. He reminds me of Reggie Dupard, almost the identical size, 5'11 That's or true. so, 180, with that same little rolling hip move that, that makes so many tacklers miss. Okay, that is the end of the third quarter of play. The Panther exhorting the players out on the field to mount a comeback, and it will take a monumental comeback for Purdy to catch Yates. Let's pause for these messages. And Ray Gaskin, Norm Hitzkus, and our sideline reporters, Jay Hendricks and Tony Therio. 23 to nothing, Houston Yates leading. And after a standoff in the first quarter, Yates started to take command of the game in the second period. They led 9 nothing at the half, and it's been all Yates in the second half of play. Price on the option, keeping down the 40-yard line, and he's got a first down. Let's go down to Jay Hendricks now for another report, Jay. If you can see behind me, the Permian crowd is really kind of stunned somewhat. They're not used to something like this. You see a zero on their side, you see 23 points on the other side. You don't see that very often. This, this side is down somewhat, and I think that affects on the team as well. They are down, and uh, they played a tough ball game, but they just aren't doing the things that they need to do, and, and that's hurt them somewhat. But they're a proud team. They'll come out of it with their heads up, but nonetheless, they have played really a good ball game, and it's just tough to go against a team like the Houston Yates. Back to you guys. Price, is intercepted, and Permian has needed a break. Back to the 40-yard line, Darren Allman with the interception from his safety position, and that's the first time in the ballgame that Permian has come up with a really big defensive play. Well, we talked about the fact that if there was to be a mojo miracle in this game, Yates would have to give the miracle some help. Well, here's a little help. Right into the safety's hands, Price had the receiver he thought open. What he didn't read was the safety sitting back in a double zone. The safety just playing center field against that side of the field. Now, if you're Permian, though, you've got to score, but you've got to score quickly. That's right. 11.28 left in the ball game. So Permian has it at the Yates 40-yard line. Jason Harrington, all the way at quarterback today. Looking for Anderson, and it is incomplete at the 15-yard line. And one-on-one -on -one coverage out there, and he was trying to lob it over the defensive back, James Christian's head. Anderson got a hand on it. As often as not, that's, that's about all he needs, but this time he doesn't make the catch. Here are the stats after the third quarter. Look at the disparity in the rushing yardage in this game. Realize Permian usually gets per game 226 yards and gives up 133. Normally we would say highly unofficial stats, but Stan Hobatter is keeping the stats for us today, and he is one of the best. Well, take another three yards away from Permian on the ground, Stanley. Down to 30. Three yards rushing now in the game. Sider losing three. The tackle made by Kenneth Payne. Just for the sake of it, I'm going to ask Stan to total the number of running plays for Odessa in the game. The number of rushing plays for Odessa in the game. Okay, at the 43-yard line. Third down and 12 yards to go. And Harrington needs to connect here. Play action fake. Rushes on, he's rolling right, he looks, he throws, Anderson juggling, is it a catch? Yes, it's a catch at the 30-yard line, and that was a great effort by Anderson. He was trying to stay inbounds, of course, in 
high school football, you only have to have one foot inbounds for it to be a, a legal catch. James Christian was all over him defensively. Let's have another look at this, Dor. This is a great bit of concentration by Anderson. Harrington rolls away from the blitz of Foster, but look at the play by Anderson. Now, watch the ball. To catch the ball, he has it, and the foot was just dragging. Now, he's going to be a little bit short. It sets up fourth and one. I got the play for it. it they got the first down. Yeah. Oh, the guy hadn't turned his sheet over when I saw it. I looked down and I saw four, but it, it is the first down. Again, if you're Odessa, you got to crank it up and score quickly here. Don't be, don't be surprised if, if they go end zone from this area. What really bugs me now is I don't get to find out what the play was going to be. But maybe you can... I'd go and play action and hoist it up fourth and a foot. <laughs> first down, 30-yard line. Permian in desperate strikes. They've got to score on this position. Sider hit, he'll lose a yard or two. Yeah, I know they want to keep the Yates defense honest. But it, it does it does Odessa very little good if it takes them four minutes to get in the end zone from here. Kenneth Payne and James Good there to wrap up Sider. It'll be second down, 14 yards to go. Right in the game. That's the 28th Odessa rushing play for 29 yards. Mm. And on the passing plays, the only thing that has really worked for them is the rollout where they can avoid that intense rush. Harrington, oops, lost his uh, grip on the football, and he's very lucky that it wasn't intercepted. It's going to bring up third down at 14. Kind of a strange-looking pass. It was hard to tell whether Anderson or Lauterbach was the intended receiver. And nonetheless, is, boy, he's had a great season this year. Uh, another uh, young man, as you mentioned earlier, Norm, uh, Rich Fletcher was the starting quarterback. Uh, he got hurt. Harrington was uh, pressed into duty, and what did he do? Well, he led his team right into the state championship football game. And, of course, he got some great support from the other members of the football team. Third down, 14 to go. Harrington, the rush on again. Harrington in trouble. He's sacked at the 40-yard line. They are so cap quick. Larry Gill, 195-pound senior defensive end, there to sack Harrington. And you can bet that uh, Harrington has not seen the kind of pass rush this year that he has seen this afternoon. Odessa has no choice here. They must go for it on fourth down. Fourth and about 20 to go from the 39-yard uh, line. Fourth and 19. Yeah, no, no choice here with 9.30 to play and down by 23 points. The Yates Lions will take the time out. So they want to collect their thoughts about defensive strategy, and that gives us an opportunity to pause for a minute with 9.29 remaining in the football game here at Texas Stadium in Irving, the 5A State Championship. Looking like the crowd will go to Houston Yates. The state championship football game, Permian Panthers face fourth down and about 21 to go. Of rallying in this football game, they've got to pull off a miracle. Harrington got some time, scrambling, still didn't have a receiver open. Now throws for Anderson, and there were at least five Yates players in the vicinity. It goes as an incomplete pass, and the ball will go over to Houston Yates. Greg Eaglin and Byron Moore, the safety men, the uh, closest defenders to Anderson. But there was a case norm where I think, you know, you've got to go to what's got you there when you're in trouble. But in, in that particular instance, where Harrington just was determined to find Anderson, there, there were five players all over. Well, that's one of the problems. Nobody else in this club catches a pass per game, and, and Yates can see that, too. They double and triple team the that's big right. receiver in crucial situations. Price will keep it on the ground. Johnny Bailey, 40, 45. Bailey fumbles the football, and the Panthers have come up with it at the 48-yard line. So Odessa is not totally dead yet, 9-14 to go in the game, and the Panthers will take over. Robert Williams with the fumble recovery for Mojo. Robert Williams, the leading interceptor for uh, Permian this year with eight, comes up with a heads-up recovery here. Bailey looks like he's thinking touch every time. He's making moves. That was just, he's not got the ball securely there. That wasn't anybody's fault but Johnny Bailey's, who didn't put the ball away as he made the cut. First down, 48-yard line of Yates. Harrington will roll right again. This is the side of the field where he's had most of his 
success throwing, and it's almost intercepted at the 39-yard line, looking for Lauterbach this time. Let's see, it's number 34, James Christian, who got his hand on the ball defensively. Mr. Christian's played a good game today. I have a hard time finding anybody in the red shirts who hasn't. They have played a good one. I don't know if you've seen what Harrington's been doing. He's been going to the sidelines between plays, then running back into the huddle. Tell you what, he's got to be in some shape to run to the sidelines and bring his own play back in. Second down, 10 yards to go. Look out here. You get the feeling Yates is going to start pouring people into the backfield. And the only way to avoid that is with the roll. And the pass is caught by a lot down at the 41-yard line. But it will not be enough for a first down. Let's go down to the sidelines for another update. Norm Ray, you guys talked about Permian really going with what's carried him this far. And that's really what they're doing right now. They're moving the ball. They're, they got to, they, they had to give up the ball, and then they come right back and go pick up the fumble. Now, that's typical of Permian. They're going to continue doing it. They're not going to give up till the end. Despite being down 23-0, they're not going to give up. And it, it would be nice to see him get a touchdown. Maybe we'll slip one on just to, so it doesn't become a blowout. All right, back to you guys. All right, there was a penalty on the last play. There you see the official picking the flag up, Norm. Holding against Yates and... This is the Whopper holding. This is the mortal sin holding against Yates, the Tim Yarder. <laughs> there are so many penalties these days. And then there's certain penalties in pros are certain yardage, and certain college are certain yardage, and certain high school. Five for this, yardage. ten for that, fifteen for this and that. I know. I, t I called uh, Jim Ely, uh, who is a prominent uh, official, works a lot of top high school football games in the area, and talked to him for a few minutes yesterday just to brush up on the differences in some of the penalty yardage. But you're right. Uh, there, there are lots of penalties in football these days. First down at the 38-yard line, movement by Yates. for a running back. I mean, the thing you hate the most if you're the running back is for one guy to stop your progress. You don't mind so much getting popped by one guy. That's one-on-one. -on -one. But if a guy gets a hold of your legs, you can't go anywhere, and the city of Houston's about to... Comes off the field. Cider back in the game. It's going to be second down, 10 yards to go. 38-yard line of Houston Yates. Carrington rolling right, wings it out there. Oh, another great catch by Anderson. And what would appear to be a losing effort this afternoon, you certainly can't find anything wrong with Anderson's performance. There's another flag down, however, but let's go ahead and watch the replay first. Maybe we can see what the flag is for. Notice Harrington on the roll and the man tracking him and then whacks him. I would not be surprised if that were a Houston Yates penalty for hitting after Harrington delivered the ball. Meanwhile, Anderson's a magician. If Anderson catches six passes today, he breaks the all-time record for Odessa Permian catches in a season. He has just tied it. That's number five. Anderson needs one more catch. It would be 71. Now what are we going to call here? Well, they're still talking it over. The penalty indicated against uh, Yates, 7.59 left to play meanwhile. 23 to nothing to score. Yates over Permian. Wait! Penalty declined Wait, to take no. the yardage in the uh, first down. That should be tacked down to the end of the play. That's a personal foul. Now John yeah. Wilkins is out there saying, hey, give me a break here. Well, you know. <laughs> Just got a shot. Was that crazy, Ray? I just looked at the monitor for a second. That's what John Wilkins was protesting. Apparently, he got a reasonable answer from referee Marvin Cantor as to why the personal foul penalty was not tacked on to the end of that play. That will be first down at the 28-yard line as Permian gets closer to a score. about 34 points a game and they got nothing this afternoon and the flags come flying now still 759 to go and it's been a kind of a long break here in between plays offside Permian so it'll be first down 15 the right side right got tackle. the wrong step count what was that song by uh, what was it? Uh, 
song. It was Dr. John, but I can't remember the name of the song. I was on the inside, you were on the outside. Hey, any, some nonsensical anything song. Anything you say, right? Okay. Yeah. Second down, 15 to go at the 33-yard line. Anderson splits left and Lauder back down to the right. Another play action fake. Good blocking this time. And a quick toss over to the tight end. And they have not utilized Watson this afternoon. Nolan Watson, 161-pound junior tight end. Tackle made by Melvin Foster. So they get a few on the reception. That's a play they probably should have gone to long ago. As the wide receivers are downfield and the linebackers either drop deep in coverage or come for the quarterback, that inside belly zone, that five, seven, eight yards down from the line of scrimmage has been fairly open. Third down, nine yards to go at the 27. With just over seven minutes to play. Harrington will roll right, and he'll lose one tackler. He's got nobody open out there. Now he will have to keep the ball, and he swarmed under at the 33-yard line. Larry Gill over there to make the tackle. So was Chris Gardner, the strong side linebacker. Boy, the, you just cannot say enough about the job that the Yates defense has done. And when you start... Uh, handing out accolades, Norm, to the defensive line. you got to remember the linebackers. We've mentioned their names so many times. And, and the secondary players, they are covering the receivers. The only catches made today by Anderson have been under a lot of pressure with defenders all over it. Anderson's caught, made several nice catches, but a couple were at the end of the first half, and they kept Anderson contained, not controlled, but contained. contained. Carrington on fourth down. Sacked to the 31 yard line, and that is a bundle of sacks for the H defense. Number 66, Melvin Foster, in there to make the tackle. He say with another sack for Houston Yates. He said it a lot today, hadn't he? And now it's a bit. Melvin still has a few more things to say. He's been ushered off the field by head uh, by Hobson, and really, there's not a lot of call for that. Okay, with a score, 23 to nothing, Yates 6-15 left to play in the football game, and we'll be back. And that late flag apparently will be another penalty against Permian, at least the reaction of the players on the field and the crowd to it indicate that penalty will be a step off. It is another personal foul against Permian, the third for late hit today. The problem for the Permian team is they're a swarm the ball defensive type of team. Bailey is a, as you get to see some shucking and jiving on the eight sideline. Saw a great banner that said Mojo No Mo. <laughs> It was a big, big banner. That's a great shot. The problem for the, the officials and for Permian is Bailey's a squirmy type of running back. He, he's always making a last move, and you never quite get the feeling he's down. That's not in defense of a late hit so much as it is to tell you Bailey's the type of guy you hit until you got him surely down. Okay, Price gets off, and here we go again. 40, 35, 30, and down to the 24-yard line. Lawrence King. Flag down. This one back near the line of scrimmage, and it was Darren Allman who uh, saved the touchdown. But let's go back the other way. Wipe it out. Backs in motion against the Houston Yates Lions on the play, and it'll wipe out a substantial, almost 30-yard gain for King. Lawrence King playing in the shadow of Johnny Bailey, but when they give him the ball and he's got the blocking up front, he shines too. Two excellent running backs paired up with quarterback Charles Price. He just can't find any weaknesses with the Yates football team. The only thing that has 
tended to bother them this year is the mistakes and penalties and that sort of thing. But heck, uh, when you can have uh, five personal fouls, miss an extra point, cough up the ball a couple times, throw an interception or two, and still beat uh, a team 34 to seven like they beat Holmes last week in San Antonio, that really says something. Here comes Bailey again. He cuts to the outside, 35. What a move by Bailey. He's down to the 26-yard line, and he is putting on a show. Bailey approaching 200 yards and rushing now. Is, as you see Yates celebrate, what does the Taylor here for you? As you see Bailey, that, watch a guy that's always thinking touchdown. Right here, Bailey starts thinking touchdown. Now he can stay inside and get an extra five, but that's not where the touchdown is. Now watch the cut back here. He's thinking touch, touch, get me in the end zone. A lot of guys, when they break the line of scrimmage, look for where they're going to go down. Bailey looks for where he's going to wind up. 187 yards on 18 carries. Well, he had something like 242 last week against Holmes. That's 429 yards in the last two weeks for Bailey. Go ahead, give, give some more. And here we go again. 20, 15, 10, 5, and it's another touchdown for the Yates Lions. And it's Johnny Fisher who has just come into the ball game, replacing King. And they have got yet another back who can carry it. Johnny Fisher. Johnny Fisher. Doesn't say here whether he's a junior or a senior. I've got, you know, I have a sneaky suspicion he, he'll probably be back next year. Let me give you an outrageous statistic. Okay? That is the 41st time this year Johnny Fisher has carried the ball. You got that in your mind? The 41st time. 41st carry for Johnny Fisher. Not many carries in 16 games. 13 for touchdowns. Oh, my. Is that that outrageous? Smith connects on the extra point kick. and a quarter yards every carry this year for Fisher. 13 is 41 carries for touchdowns. Okay, 5-0-3 left to play in the football game as we get a look at Fisher's touchdown run. How about that cutback? We were talking about Bailey earlier. Slips about three. Houston Austin, 70 to nothing. Houston Milby, 51 to nothing. Madison, 27 to 14. Sterling, 48 to six. Davis, 72 to nothing. Houston Jones, 13 to six. Then Wheatley, 68 to nothing. Sam Houston, 50 to nothing. Springwoods, 37 to nothing. West Orange start, 19-6. Jones, 21-15 four tackles and goes in for another score. It's now 30 to nothing, Houston Yates, with 5.03 left to play. We'll be back with the conclusion of today's 5.8. Four tackles and goes in for another score. It's now 30 to nothing, Houston Yates, with 5.03 left to play. We'll be back with the conclusion of today's 5A championship in just a moment. 31 nothing. They beat Beaumont Westbrook. Now that's the champion in this class a couple years ago. They beat him 46-16. Then beat Worthy 26 nothing. Houston Austin 70 to nothing. Houston Milby 51 to nothing. Madison 27 to 14. Sterling 48 to six. Davis 72 to nothing. Houston Jones 13 to six. Then Wheatley 68 nothing. Sam Houston 50 to nothing. Springwoods 37 to nothing. West Orange start 19-6, Jones 21-15, and San Antonio Holmes 34-7. Holy cow. And meanwhile, while the offense was scoring lots of points, the defense got eight shutouts. New quarterback in the game, Rich Fletcher, has replaced Harrington at quarterback. Fletcher is a senior, started the season at quarterback, as we mentioned earlier, and he will be playing here in the final moments of this game. You know who's sitting at home kicking themselves right now? Jesse Jones High School. The only they, team that played uh, Yates close twice. They lost to him by seven, and they lost to him by six. Jesse Jones, no offense to a disaffirmian, Jesse Jones is sitting home right now saying, we may be the second best team in this state. 421 left, second down, nine yards to go at the 16-yard line. Fletcher looking to throw. Almost intercepted at the 25-yard line by Foster. Well, Coach Luther Booker, who's got a great football program this year, is about to win his first state championship, the first for Yates. Booker's record, 137 wins, 31 losses, 6 ties at Yates High School. 
but if there has been a wrap, it's been the fact that they've gotten so close but have not won the state title. But they're going to win it this year. You are watching a Permian team struggle right now offensively. Realize that in the last 21 years of their football program, they have lost 26 games. This is a team that never, you talk about never losing lose. badly, never loses. Well, let's see, 76, 3, and 5 in the decade of the 80s. They've only lost three ball games in the 80s. That's six football seasons. And, and Permian today is, is in their 25th playoff game since 1980. 25 playoff games in, in this decade. I wonder the last time this coaching staff had November and December off. <laughs> Coach Wilkins probably never. Ball taking a Permian roll. It'll be touched down at the 38-yard line with three minutes and 23 seconds left in the contest. Again, I want to express my appreciation to our crew today, Eric Norberg, our TD down in the truck, Mario Manny Blake, our camera guys. Great shots on the football game today. And uh, Good work by our slow mo replay people, too. Got to get some nice, candid close up shots. And I'm sure that uh, all those people down in Houston who are Yates fans with VCRs will be forever <laughs> grateful because they'll roll this one back and forth a lot of times in the years to come. You know, I was just thinking something, and we've sent your friend out to check on it. Yes, Les Bobber, our spot. I, I wonder. I wonder where 30 to nothing ranks in the history of Permian losses. I can't imagine that they've been beaten this badly very often. Uh, they lost to Eulis Trinity 8-7. to seven. They, You know, they've lost some games in the playoffs, but shoot, this is a club that came in here unbeaten in the last 31 games, and that wasn't even close to the longest streak in the school's history. They won 41 in a row from 79 through 82. Of course, uh, Odessa Permian is the defending co-champion. They tied with Beaumont Westbrook for the title last year right here at Texas Stadium. They played the 21 all time. Santa is definitely on the Yates side of the... Oh, my goodness, he's sitting on... Well, he's trying to bring some cheer to the Permian side of the stadium here. Just a couple minutes left. But he's been on Yates' side for most of the afternoon. Kept their first team on the field, except new quarterback now for Yates. It is Kevin Phillips, the quarterback for Yates now. Phillips handing off on first down. Well, Charles Price, the starting quarterback for Yates, was wrapping up a terrific season. Came in here with 2,300 yards passing, 23 touchdown passes, and he has directed a flawless offense this afternoon. Johnny Bailey, we've already amplified on what a sensational game he's had today. Lawrence King, the other starting running back, ripped off some real good runs. It's been a total effort, both offensively and defensively for Houston Yates. Billy Marker is down. Throw right in the spot where you usually get holding. Second down play, and that's right. 78, we got a shot of him a moment ago. We didn't talk about it much today. Darren Nassett, the right guard for Houston Yates. He's the starter at that position, or he's still in the game. Darren Nassett weighs, at least uh, he's listed on the roster at 265. And I think he's I think he's really even even bigger than that. The uh, <laughs> Interestingly enough, the person I talked to in Houston, I'm not going to mention their name, of course, who was giving me the inside tidbits, he said, you know, they give you a little line or two about each player, you know, strong, fast, intelligent. With uh, Darren Nassett, the 265-pound senior guard, said, very strong, comma, maybe overweight. <laughs> but he's a good player. He lines up at the right guard spot, right next to the center there. Option play, and he gets back up to the 35. 37 yard line, Gary Williams, another one of those fleet running backs for Yates who doesn't get to carry the ball much, but uh, they do use him on kickoff and punt returns. He's in there matched up now in the uh, backfield with the new quarterback, Phillips. And it is a disconsolate Odessa Permian pitch. Well, it's almost a feeling of disbelief. It's like 
Yeah, for this that, happen? Yeah, for that almost a tragedy unfolding that they've never seen before. I see that fellow came prepared. He had a t-shirt that said blowout. Notice he wasn't showing it early today. No, that's true. That, that's, that type of stuff is easy to show in the fourth quarter when you're up 30 to nothing. I, I bet you he didn't walk in with that first shirt above there showing blowout. No, sir. Tell you what, Yates respected Permian coming in. They knew they, they had to get this club out of the game because of Permian's tradition of coming back. And there's your time, 125 left to play. And Yates will punt something they haven't done much of this afternoon. It was a cat and mouse game in the first quarter as neither team could get anything going offensively, but uh, from the early stages of the second period on, the game has belonged to the Yates Lions. Yates will take a timeout with a minute 13 left in the contest. This is only Yates' third punt of the day and is their first punt since way back early in the second quarter. It happened during a break uh, during our halftime show, but uh, I got a chance to hear the Permian band play that the fight song, the theme from Hawaii 5 and they really had the crowd rocking it. Honest to gosh, that's been about the highlight today for, for Permian. The fans made more noise when the band was playing at halftime than they've been able to at any time during the contest because it has been so thoroughly dominated by Houston Yates. Very high kick. Fair catch is called for by Anderson at the 27-yard line. And that's where Permian will put the ball into play. Want to wish you a happy holiday season, Norm. Thank you, Ray, and thank you to our viewers. Uh, I don't see any suitcases packed. Uh, you know, you're one of these guys. I can't keep up with you. You you may have three or four things going in one day. You shocked me today. You're not dashing out of here to catch a taxi to the airport and do another game someplace tonight. No, you take the night off, spend it home with the little woman. Huh? That's right. All right. I tell you what, there'll be some celebrating in Houston. They'll leave right after the game. But I tell you what, nobody nobody in the red and yellow is going to be asleep at ten tonight. Rest assured. Watch your out to Anderson incomplete. It'd be 25-yard line. And again, our congratulations to the other teams who qualify for the finals in all five of the UIL categories. We uh, had a partial from the softball uh, Sweetwater football game earlier. It was a three-nothing Sweetwater in the first quarter. By the way, this Houston Yates team will get to try to improve on a record next year. They have won 47 consecutive games in district play. That is the all-time... Oh, all right, look at this. It's picked up. It'll be a touchdown for Yates. Oh, my goodness. Reginald Briggs was anticipating that. He timed it perfectly. Knight right in front of Anderson and launched it for another six points. And that will bring the score to a shocking 36 to nothing. Yates. tells it all. That kind of begins to remind you of Cowboys versus uh, Cincinnati. Remember, remember that one, Norm? It, yeah, except it just didn't, it was just relentless. It just never ended. Except the Cowboys get blown out a lot more often than Odessa. Well, Bermian that's true. Uh, Bergen doesn't get them. Okay, the extra point try by Quentin Smith. this afternoon. And he puts it through the uprights and it's now 37 to nothing. Yates with 56 seconds left to play. Well, the state championship in 5A will go to Houston Yates outright. And here is perhaps the last points of the ballgame. Well, Braggs has seen that play before and the pass hits Briggs in, in full flight. Anderson just can't get a hold of him and Briggs is gone. Another one of those players for whom there will be some offers you get the feeling after the year. Sure will. Briggs, 160 pound senior. And 
you got to think you'd be playing some college football for this year. They've got some nice players on this club. We haven't even, mentioned, we haven't even mentioned like outside linebackers Chris Gardner and Kenneth Payne who are key to the club. You know, the interior line where we showed you a shot of Garrett earlier. It, it's easy to concentrate on the stars, the Goode and the, and the uh, Foster. Foster and right. and the safeties, Evelyn and Moore. But this is a fine football. I tell you what, a football recruiter could do worse than just set up the shot. And Houston Yates would say, every year, give me your 15 bets. You could do worse than that, believe me. There may be a couple of guys setting up shop and doing it. Yeah, yeah. 37 to nothing, Houston Yates. And they are about to win their first state championship. They will finish the season 16 and 0. Odessa Permian will finish 14 1 and 1. And it's over. The, the uh, monkey's gone. It's officially off the back of Houston Yates. Sider picks it up at the 25, up to the 30. And he is tripped up at the 35-yard line with now 49 seconds left to play. You know, there's been a, a rumor or two. You know, I always hate these people who you know, start rumors. But several, uh, this has come from several different sources. There have been some people who have mentioned to me this past week that, uh, that John Wilkins might decide to move on to other things and that he might step down from coaching at Odessa Permian after this season. No official word, uh, but it, it's come from several different people that, it's, that, that it at least has been uh, considered by uh, Coach Wilkins. Gosh, we'd hate to see him leave the coaching ranks. This is Albert Jordan, another down at the 35-yard line. And that breaks it. That's right. That breaks for Anderson. The all-time record at Odessa Fermian for catches in a season. That's number 71 for Greg Anderson on the year. He's now well over 100 yards on the day receiving. What an acrobatic young man this is. And look at the arm on Albert Jordan. Third quarterback in the game for Permian, Albert Jordan. He winged it. And the starter next year, you would think. Because he's the junior and the seniors, Harrington and Fletcher, graduate. We're going to get to see his arm again, right? Rolling right. And this time he goes for Anderson again. That's another catch by Anderson. That's about three or four that he's made right down in that same vicinity this afternoon, tight roping the sideline. Anderson now up to about 123, 124 yards in receiving today. Anderson's got about two-thirds of their offense. He really does. Look at that catch. Holy cow. 15 seconds left. The Panthers trying to score. You know, last week they had the game with Cyfair wrapped up on penetrations, but on the last play of the game, they did kick a field goal because they wanted to win it outright. Anderson got nowhere to go this time. He's down at the 20-yard line with seven seconds left. Six seconds. The Panthers have some timeouts remaining if they want to use them, and now they do call timeout with two seconds left. Did you see that, Blake? Jordan dropped the ball. It was kicked. He reached down, picked it up, and knew exactly where his receiver was. Now, look at, look at this. This amazes me. This is the discipline of Permian. Yesterday, they were running a dummy drill. No defense. Wilkins had his head set on and was messengering plays out to an offense that was not playing against any defense. He calls his team over. He is still coaching because next year, this is the unit that's got to bring Permian right back to Texas Stadium or the Astrodome or that's wherever right. they play the championship because you get the feeling talking to the Permian people that they really don't care much who the other club is, but by golly, half of the championship game is theirs. Well, they certainly would like nothing better than to get a touchdown here on the last play of the game and at least get on the board. They did not threaten at all in the first half. In fact, uh, they just they haven't threatened, period, when you get right down to it. They have not been down real close to the goal line this afternoon. This is it. This is it right here, 20-yard line. Isn't that amazing? No so penetration. The furthest they've been. There has been no penetration of the Yates 20-yard line today. That's correct. Okay, this will be the final play of the game unless there's a penalty. Lobbed up down to the end zone. Lots of players there. Picked up at the one-yard line, and that will be the end of the football game. 
intercepted by the Yates Lions, Harold Tucker. So that'll wrap it up here at Texas Stadium in Irving. We'll come back with a final comment or two as the Houston Yates Lions are crowned the 1985 5A football champions. They defeat Odessa Permian 37 to nothing. We'll be back. Championship, how do you feel? Fantastic. I look real excited. Not, not much, really. Did they do anything that you didn't expect that you uh, that you were surprised by, Permian? Not really. Uh, they were a real fine team. I think they played well. I think our guys played real well, and I think we were fortunate. Good job, Coach. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Jay? Okay, Teo, I've got Greg Anderson here. Greg, first off, you come into the game, you know you're going to have your hands full with them, and really they played as tough as you expected. Things just didn't seem to go right for you. No, we just couldn't get any offense going on. The defense stopped them for you know, most of the game. Uh, it was just a, they just played exceptionally well. And, uh, I think we could have done something with the football early on. I think it would have been a more tougher game, but they just ran away with us. It seemed frustrating that, that you guys just couldn't seem to get it rolling. You know, you'd get a turnover, you'd start moving the defense, just or the, the offensive line didn't seem to give uh, Jason the coverage he needed, and that kind of was frustrating and, and kind of kept you all down. Well, we tried to keep them out of it. I think they tried it as hard as they could. Uh, I don't think any of them didn't, didn't try to do it on purpose. Uh, Houston Nation is just a better offensive line, a defensive line. Uh, they just played an exceptional game. You, know? you can't do nothing about that. We try our best. You yourself, your feelings on uh, being the, you, you have more receptions than anybody in the history. So uh, 73, I think, is the total number of receptions. Your feelings on that? I don't know. My feelings right now, uh, it doesn't do any good because we just lost the football game. But, uh, you know, I like it. I think it's good to have to be to have personal things like that. But uh, as far as the team goes, you know, it doesn't mean anything right now. Okay, thanks. Back up to you guys up top. All right, a very disappointed uh, Greg Anderson. We'll come back with some final comments from Texas Stadium in a moment. So stay with us. Better two. I don't know if we can put the season of Houston Yates into perspective. That's tough to 659 do. points scored and 77 allowed. They're 16-0. They won one game by six and one game by seven, both over Jesse Jones High School. Two games by 13, and today is the 12th time out of 16 games they won by 26 points or more, and the eighth time out of 16 they have shut out the opponent. This is a hell of a football team. Fantastic performance today by the Houston Yates squad as they run away from Odessa Permian, your final 37 to nothing. We've uh, certainly enjoyed being with you, and until next year, so long, everybody. Hi, I'm Dr. Nicole Richardson. Welcome to Highland Village Smile Studio.